a feeling we're going to see Fracture today and the game after. Uh, so let's take a look. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, is this the correct graphic? <laughs> Do we uh, get the correct graphic? Because what is going on? Okay, so not only have they let Bind and Ascent through, but both of them decided to pick it as well. It's Ooh. insane. It's it's the fact that Guild saw their weakness last week on Icebox and decided, hey, if they prepare something against us, we, we cannot be bothered. The fact that we're going to see the Bind is going to be unexplored from both these teams for such a long time. And BBL banning Breeze, I mean, after what happened against Meg, I'm, I'm not surprised, but uh, I'm really nervous. leaving the, the yeah. other yeah. options open? But is this the time? With no fade? Is this the time to do it <laughs> right? Know. Given that oh, BBL's yeah, sure. playoffs hope is riding on this, is today the best day to do this? It's a it's a great day to sort of scramble it through. For Guild, it's like the metaphor I have is it's like a rainy day in Stoke in football. Like Guild are in such a difficult position. They have no oh. like map to hold on to really. It's all right. This is sort of like you want to get first place. You need to show how good you are across the whole map pool. And this is a big shift for EMEA, right? It's less about we're going to ban maps we don't want to play. It's more we're going to ban maps that they are very good at. Mm -hmm. And we just have to sort of grim and bear whatever they throw at us. So, yeah, this is a great baptism of fire for Guild to show us what, if they deserve first seed. There's also no way that Kakuka knows where uh, Stoke is, but um, some of you might be from Stoke at home, and I hope you voted in the Twitter poll today for this uh, <laughs> game because we have the results. You guys predicted at home that Guild were going to take this 63%. I'm, I'm surprised. I thought all the BBL fans were going to come in and be like, we're going to flip this. We're going to win. After the map poll, I'd be curious to see if those like votes are any Changes. different as yeah. well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we should we should do map per map. I, I would say that when we have the, the the map veto, we we should do at least on the on our chat. You know, who, I think we do that. You know, who's going to take this map? I think that that's an interesting interesting one because I want to see that fracture happening. Yeah. What's more interesting here on Bind is that, like you both said, we don't know anything when it comes Maybe, to the yeah. agent select. We don't know what yeah. we're going to expect to see. Although I would uh, at least like to see the fade from Guild. Uh, yeah. From what Pora said, they're definitely not going to pick it. Well, yeah. Both teams have not played this map in a while. BBL have not won it at all this year. They played it three times in the qualifiers to get to challenges, but lost it every single time. So Super wasn't even in there. No, it was a whole different squad, right? You had Marsh at Sydney. This is team. different. So this is already. gonna be yep, immediately okay. different. Yep, safe uh, is moving over to the Viper. Leave Aslan the here. from the okay. Sova to the Sage. QT is going to be playing with the Chamber. Truka picking up that brimstone. Okay, so. We're not going to see the fade. I was kind of expecting that double initiator with Leo maybe going onto the fade, but no, again, the teams are going to stick to not playing the agent. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be nice to see Russ's Sky again. He was sort of known yep. for that overall, but him and Kuldemet are staying on the same mm -hmm. agents that they played when we saw them in stage one, albeit briefly in like playoffs. Leo, Trex and Safe all switching around. More yep. KO on Bind. This could be a bit more of a trend coming through. Not having the raise makes me a little bit nervous for BBL. I'm not yeah. going to lie. Yeah, 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 completely. I mean, uh, we know that we accept Chamber as a duelist, but you're going to be lacking on that mobility going forward. You know that the trade denial is going to be there, but maybe on the execution, on the execution part of the, yeah. of the thing is going to be a little bit more complicated. Attacking is going to suck for BBL, okay. I think. It's going, to yeah. be, it's going to be a big challenge and a lot of it goes on to QT playing the chamber. Who was it that played without, the, without, um, um, uh, without a duelist on Bind? Was it Navi? It oh, was Navi, yeah. Yeah, yeah, really yeah. And the executes that. were... Open. Yeah, we'll see you indeed, but I'm excited to get into this map now, guys. On Bind, Pansy and High Park are going to be getting straight into game and take you guys through Bind. Alrighty, it is game time. Thank you very much, Des, for kind of leading us into this. Now, Mike, of course, do you echo sentiment to the Des? Do you, where do you sit on this matchup in general? I think coming into this for us, I, I think for me at least, I'm looking at Guild quite substantially yeah. just by their, 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 their run so far. Is there anything that's going to dissuade you from that or are you quite adamant in this? Is the map will potentially dissuade you? Yeah, I mean, I'm open to be surprised. Uh, the, the problem being Guild just look better and better every time we see them. Uh, even yeah, even just coming down to the fine tuning. Uh, I mean, Safe and Trex for me have been two highlights here in this roster, uh, but uh, all round they have looked fantastic. And BBR, unfortunately, I mean, it's been turbulent. And uh, now that the pressure's on, I have even more concerns for them to deliver, to be honest. And coming into the pistol, a couple of frenzies brought up by Guild as well. So Cold Dementor and Leo, a little more equipped. On the other side, no frenzy investment. Who are they? <laughs> Not fancying it. Best gun in the game, apart from maybe a shorty. I don't know. Um, no, at this point, Guild... that one. <laughs> yeah. yeah, true. And, and look at this proactive little bit of a walkout by BB... Ooh, Pora just got Yeah, gets caught on the turn, actually, there. 
I, that could have been huge. If he got to keep his life, you know, maybe no one the two of those players, well, yeah. that would have been massive. But, well, that's a player down. And now they have to try and recoup that lost space coming back through. But BBL, great start. Yeah, and a, a, a lot of the clock actually run down already here as two more members oh. of Guild are going to drift through. Cold Minter is walking through here. Outside Shower is going to get picked off for it. Good for another here. It's going to be a... Uh, you have to resort to walking through short here. And you already hear it there. 30 seconds remaining. A lot for Guild to do here to try and recover this pistol round. Yeah, that double stack towards Showers is going to be horrible to try and clear. And again, if you've got that one player just sat towards the box, it's not going to be pleasant by any means. And well, Leo's found Aim DLL. So maybe there's a little bit of room to work, but rotations are coming in. That's why he had to go down. I'm curious if that can be achieved safely. Swing towards CT gets handled by Aslan. And now Trex left in the 1v3. What's the first? Good clear up by BBL. And honestly, that initial aggression, that double dip towards showers, feels as though it set the tone for this. Absolutely. And it kind of picked apart with, with so much of the clock being run down already. It really left Guild struggling to recover that, to be honest. Colder meant to drift in a little further ahead. Gets mm. picked off as well. But great play from Pora. I mean, the one to lead that charge outside showers. In BBL, the pistol round here. Guild actually going to have frenzies <laughs> across the board now, as I'm sure you're there happy to see. Go. So expect them to try and run it down here. And I think immediately here, we're going to see them try and counter that, Laura. There's four members mm. of Guild stacked outside showers right now. We're not really going to see them just throw the stimmy down, get a flash deep in the showers and try and take back this control. You can set the precedent back. There we go. A bit of a tone change. Flash goes in. We'll catch, but you can already see that peeling away quite comfortably is Kushina. So he'll be all right for now. Was there a snake bite on the other side of that? I was curious if they were going to try and crunch... A little bit of utility on the back, but again, it looks like Kushin is fine, so sitting pretty. On. And again, BBL managed to at least keep their lives in that first attempt at potentially punishing anyone who's going to take that shower space. But now, I guess you could argue the issue becomes okay, well, what do we do with these frenzies now? We've lost that initial springboard that we wanted. Where do we go to now? What's the next step? Well, they, they also have to fill the gap towards B now to make use of these weapons, so. That's not actually with a delayed wall in hooker here. Does get caught with a headshot immediately. She's forced off the angle. Unfortunately, not to find the kill there, to be honest. The second player was stacked up with Trex, I believe, who found that headshot. But we'll draw the rotation here. Well, I actually considered here. Kushner actually. It's the dog. Yeah, heading back dog towards A. it, man. Or uh, checking down on long. They gambled a little bit. Obviously, there could have been a chance there was someone else behind that. Maybe they didn't see everything. But you saw the chamber was instantly pulling back over towards LA. So I and uh, actually, a two for two trade thus far. 25 seconds. Getting this plant's going to be see. hard, though. Yeah, surely this... Yeah, okay. Plants come in. I'm getting a little nervous because there's there's now a couple of spectres. Well, one spectre, should I say. And the frenzies will do fine in this sort of close quarter. You should have get swung on, but it's just really well. Good trade for Trex. But back and forth now. The post plant. Let's see how good that lineup is for Coldementa. That's a 1v2 he's got to work out with the frenzy at this sort of range. He yeah, ain't going to be pretty, but he's got to give himself the chance for the first. It's gorgeous. And the Molly lands. And the Molly is good. He's got time to wrap back really through showers here as well. He's got the timing right as well. That's so nice. Look at this time being born. Now Aslan's got to gamble it, right? Where does he go on this one? And Coldementa, none the wiser to this. And Aslan's come off it. Reads it so well in the end. Aslan keeps his nerve about him. Keeps composed. Because that was right down to the wire. So he actually had time there with our cold Mentor. Steps a little early. I thought Aslan was going to stick through the entire defuse there. Mm. I thought he had to make a, a rapid decision there. But what a great round two from Guild. They stack up, they play trades very effectively. Like you said, even getting to the point there where you've got a couple of Spectres on board, I thought BBL would come through and contest the plant, honestly. So the point it that's, goes to a post logical, plant, right, yeah. that's when it gets a little dicey. I mean, throw in the fact that you had someone like Cold Amenta still alive, you had that post-plant potential danger coming in. It certainly could have spiraled, but it doesn't. And if you ignore how the rounds potentially went, you know, if you watched it live, it's a 2-0 star for BBL. Something they'd be desperately happy to get in pocket. Now, it hasn't been the most clean, to say the least. You can see the differential of purchase. This snake bite again. This is mm -hmm. Gilda so keen to just set this conditioning towards showers here. Just make them second guess everything they want to do. In terms of this early map control on the side of BBL. They're not interested at all in holding short right now. Which, again, with this composition of Guild, they have to move forward. They have to either take showers or backside control. But Crunch coming through towards Hooker here. Stack up, actually, a little ahead of the mark there for Aslan. Need one of those. 
Really could have done yeah. one of those for Kyushu now. That's site control garnered now. That can be a plant coming in. I don't think anything can really deny that. As it stands, no quick little heal. I'm going to back away towards long, set up those post plants. And you can see the rotations coming through from BBL. It's, it's all so CT based. Lots of time going to be burnt up here. And with no flank coming through, the Seeker's invested here. But uh, again, not really going to paint too much of a picture. No, and, and Codman's still got a molly, if I'm not mistaken, as well. So it's just keep got that in mind. Thing. There it is. Time is it's going to be bought now. Poor is not They're stopping. Someone check on this. Someone check on this. Oh, God, I meant to thank the heavens above. And it's still going to be messy. And you look at what's remaining. Kushina, he was the man who had to back away almost initially from this. Didn't quite find the shots he wanted. And the time's pretty much been ripped away from him. The trades did come out in the end. But my word, was that right down to the last couple of seconds of it being available. Trying to catch him on the way out. Not to be, not to be had. So I do see guild fighting back, but it certainly didn't fill me with confidence just yet. For sure, and I think this is a byproduct of what Guild have learned early on. If, if BBL are showing intention to clear through showers with three people, or even on the mm. other hand, you've got to assume if it's two pushing showers, there might even be one still holding onto lamps, just sure. keeping an eye on short. Which is why I asked that, and like I said, he's a little ahead of the curve there. I mean, you even noticed that Kushina needed one of those trades, minimum, to slow things down. And I mean, if it was cold and meant ultimately, it does pull away a little bit of that post plant power that they have. Mm. But just a little strange here to see. It's a two-man stack towards B, and to be so deep and risking giving away an entry on hookup. I'm sure, if we'll see an adjustment there at all. This time around, it's Turco. Yeah. I guess they're going to depend a little on the alt pop coming out from Leo. So should be able to at least pave the way here. But it does mean they haven't quite cleared some of these areas. They are going to be funneled forward. So it's going to be for that post plant. Most completely cold and not far from the alt, but not going to have it for this one if required. But again, you look at the retake, you got the it's not gonna be as well. easy. Oh, that's, yeah, that's very true. So for now, this is actually quite brutal for BBL, but they do have avenues to play this back in. So Guild aren't gonna be feeling too comfortable. I do see that little kind of wrap coming out from, I believe it's safe, kind of slow working back through. So you might get that backstab, but it depends on timing. BBL now gonna make their first step towards the site. Kushina with a great start towards Leo, but they've got to clear more and they've got to do it quite quickly. Kushina up to the task to find two. And now the smoke's in place and that, well, the diffuser did get denied. That's Kushina gone. Now Turco's gonna try and pick up the mantle and Nazan's trying to hold this down. The smoke is still in place. The spray's there and it's not hitting it. They are not hitting the mark. Oh, he's got it. Mentor. He's caught him. Oh, oh, oh. Oof. They almost shouldn't have, to be honest. I mean, that the fact feel like it was going to happen. The fact that Kushina comes through, finds that entry on the retake, it, it, it causes Guild to sweat. You can see no, but everybody's so scared of swinging through that smoke because mm -hmm. maybe the judge, the shorty, showing its hand a little bit. You know those sound cues there, but I mean, Guild get away with murder there. I'm not sure. The first Molly is completely off from Coldamenta. It must have been because they, they they could have they they, bet, they they did so much. I mean, the plant's on default. Uh, I think the molly actually lands on, on the middle of tube, so... Maybe a miscall? Or just uh, a fumble, maybe? I mean, you'd hope not a miscall with it. With a composition like this that relies a lot on that post plant, they have to get their, their spike plants down. They have to know exactly what's going on with that. Whatever the conclusion is, it's not great. It's Whichever not good, you want yeah. to kind of flip that coin, <laughs> yeah. right? It's like, who didn't call the plant or did he forget his lineup that he wanted? Like, none of, none of that makes sense in that regard. It so. could have been body blocked. We might not have caught it. Potentially. But... Potentially. Oh, well, the health coming out. Gonna, again, look towards showers. It's such a high priority target right now. I just called a mentor to catch Kushina, but no one's noted Aslan just yet. And well, it doesn't seem to matter because called a mentor just uh, <laughs> running guns down at some speed. Supply going to come in in the last two players deep towards CT at this point. Haven't made much impact towards the site or any of the areas they'd want to. You can see Guild in a nice little post plant already. I'm sure if, yeah, Turco and Poor are stack up here, swing through pipes. I've got any flashes to work with, two smokes, a molly, a stim, and actually just retrieving the bulldog here. I might even just give this one up mm. and hold on to the two rifles. Well, one and a half rifles. I have to see how their purchase sits. I mean, a couple of early kills here, whether or not he's close to the tour de force or mdll has got that Viper's pit online, maybe offset this purchase with a... kushner has got to be there with it, right? Because uh, he's, he's been filling the feed. He might just be. Obviously, the Viper's pit, the other one to offset it with maybe a judge purchase. Right. Aslan's been maining that already so far, so... Yeah. Ah, one yeah, away. Yeah, one away. The Viper's pit's there, though, so there's potential mm. here for BBL to muster together a purchase, but... 
who actually pumped the brakes pretty early on. Round six, going to call a timeout here. Don't and, blame him either. No? You, you look at the money scenario, and, and you do have that potential of investing the ults, right, Mike, that you were discussing, that there is that Viper's Pit there. Do they want to bring this in now? Do they want to try and buy around it? What, what do they want to bring out? And I, Again, I, I don't think Guild have been doing anything completely out of the box. They, they've they answered what BBL were putting down with that showers control. We've seen a couple of like nice bursts towards B. Now, again, nothing blowing my mind yet from Guild, but it's getting the job done. I mean, initially, even just having that set piece available with safe snake bite to... Like I said, it's it's a conditioning factor. It's going to force BBL to reconsider or at least then try and invest a little more to take Shower's control away from Guild. Mm. So I love the fact that that comes in round two. Guild, Guild are immediately looking to address that. I don't want to give up any of this early map control, which is key. I mean, they're able to make a, a decision based on that in the next round as well with that push towards B where they can almost anticipate. Aslan, slight overpeak in Hooker. He falls. He knows that... Then Kushina is going to be isolated. He has to TP away. It's, it's illogical for him to stay around and look for a trade at that point. I want to see if that all comes through from MDLL. Now it's a three-place split towards B Long, and, and there it is. So, oh, Bora's just been run over. Yeah, I mean, just maybe caught off time, off guard, sorry, with the timing of the stim beacon, I'm not sure, but a little out of sorts there for that peak. Retrieve the tour de force at least, and BBL already got four players across the B site. Guild, this is just going to cut sound for the time being. Do BBL actually force their way through here to try and retake this space? I don't know if it's a... It might be spurred on. But Trex... <laughs> oh, it's 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 a shutdown. Now I guess the one silver lining, and it's it's a very sim, slim piece of it, is that you do have the tour de force still in the hands. Kushin is going to eat the flash to an extent, but he's God. willing Ooh. and able to go for the peak. Trex gets found, and Kushin is not necessarily uh, writing this one off by any means. It's a one v two. Got himself a rifle as well to play with. Safe's got, come in. Safe's got both snake bites. Now, what's key is Kushin has actually come back through cave. He's here to address this, but Safe might have just heard his steps, Lauren. Oh, he it's hasn't. Not he's looking not looking. Kushin, surely you check on this. You know the Viper's still standing. You've got to check on this. This is. I imagine that would surely be something so high on the list of things he'd want to achieve. I thought that's why he came here. I, I thought he had the heads up awareness there to challenge this post plant lineup. Unfortunately, at this point, I mean, it's a formality. How do you dig him out of this yeah, position? There's, there's no there's way. There's flashes on Rust. They've still got the dog on him as well. He's got everything. The Here lineup's going to come in. Yep. And, well, I think you should have knows it. This one's now looking pretty cooked. Yeah, I just eaten flashes for days. Yeah, out of there. And, and, and again, I was very much in the same boat as you. I was kind of excited by the idea of him instantly going to go and challenge that. Uh, woof, still going to find Rust challenge that post plant setup right I you thought, knew the I thought he had it be there. the timing would yeah. have been good as well I, I mean I thought safe would have heard him crossing in cave but mm. then he didn't it, it, he wasn't even looking this direction just a straight 50-50 gamble there between showers and short and unfortunately loses out on that Trek's going huge though here There's, like I said BBL just waiting for that pause and unfortunately stacking up is ultimately their demise as Trex is able to line him up Four to two now. Guild's starting to present a little bit more of a leader. There's the ult we were waiting for. Opting to use it in the fall buy round. But again, Trex finding so much success. They've, they've had some of these nasty little beginnings. That pick towards Long that we saw coming out towards Pora just opened up the gates. Now you see it over here towards Hooker. And, and that's a bit of a nightmare scenario. You just popped your ult for aim DLL. He could maybe leave Turco to hit that rotation if they're feeling the pressure on B, but now there's 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 so many instances where you're not in the advantageous position. You've got a 5v4 so early on. I gotta say, it's Aslan again. It's another first death for him. Again, being on the Sage as well to slow down some of these hits that with Guild, they're stacking up. Usually always invested. Things will go through. It's going to reveal two in Hooker. Yeah, this is... They've already smoked it off as well, preemptively. Beautiful. Beautiful work. Here. All right. Plunk going to come down. And now the spam caught, caught a little bit of flag damage there. It, it wasn't, you know, perfectly on the money, but it wasn't a mile away. But, 
again, we're into these post plants, and this seems something that BBL are going to be presented with a lot. This is going to be a, a hard scenario for them to continually go to. Yeah, Bora's going to at least know one. Cold Dimension jump peeks it. They know what's up. MDLL does find Trek, so it's a little something. And there is a pinch towards coming on along. Now, Pora, uh, if he clears safe diligently, that could have been a different outcome, but it's not to be. So yes, they have the slightly the unhand flash could be good. Leo just going to put himself on the line. Cold Event is going to invest the ult. And by this point, Mikey feels like the time's almost gone. They're trying, but look at, look at, yeah, look at this... the plant. I mean, it, it's, this is a good indicator that Pora is at least addressing this now. If BBO want to challenge this, there needs to be an extra body. They need to take the space on the other side of the map. It's going to be difficult for them to do, but at least here we're seeing the positives, right? Pora coming through and challenging this. I mean, Guild's composition lacks a traditional Sentinel. There's no real flank control, so they have to dedicate a body to that now. Now that Pora has shown the awareness to come and challenge that backline, I mean, what do Guild do now? Do we stack an extra body away? They haven't really had too many problems finding entry <laughs> with Aslan giving a couple away, so... This is actually a key round to look back on now of seeing what the adjustment is on both sides. But the, the the scary factor for me is that the money's in such a bad spot for BBL. Yeah, yeah. Like, even if they gone with some of the best made plans, and I don't think they noted two there. Oh, yeah, there's... Again, these entries are untradeable, and they're just the perfect start, right? You're just taking down AMDLL. Okay, cool, we've got that first pick. Noted Kushner as well. That's some wall off the gun as well. I don't think he can retrieve the rifle. Yeah, it would be tucked in the corner, wouldn't it? I mean, it's the... going to be hard to. Let's see. Oh, we've got arms. it. Okay, yep. No worries. <laughs> <laughs> the spaghetti arming straight out. But we do see this wrap coming in from BBL. And, and again, something you noted in, in the last couple of rounds, this is going to be, become something that they have to do. They have to try and disrupt Guild. But Trek's all too aware. Good, be good for the trade. And that reveals what they're up to. Now, again, though, Guild haven't quite progressed towards site. We're not into the post plan yet. And Cold Amenta looking to maybe resecure this side of the map because while well, we know the Turco's backed away, but obviously he is completely unaware of that fact. Well, ideally, I mean, they need to finish towards A to prevent this res coming through. I mean, whether or not they can retrieve the, the weapon here and mark it. You see the Vandal line on the ground there. Whether or not Aslan's asking to stick around. He needs to get the res ahead of this hit coming towards B site, though. I mean, Turco needs to be screaming this information that they can go for the res. Alt? Oh, this could be huge. Is commit or wait, and they've He's isolated full blind, one. Though. Oh, that, that could have been such a moment for them. Kushin has done well to find Leo, and this is bought enough this time. Too. And the Kushin has come through yeah. off the back of the ult. He comes in, he takes a TP, and he's going to just one collect. This one's lost. This is a great round for BBL and a very necessary yeah, one. And and this should be done. Aslan just has to not die, and it's it's game at least in this round itself. But. I mean, one ult changed the outcome of that and good timing from Kushina, but find that again, I dare you, that's going to be the hard part, but at least it's something for them. Well, this is another key point here that BBR are able to slow down this early round progress, right? You come through the timing of the orbital strike is actually perfect to prevent that hit coming through. Kushina finds two kills on the back of it where they're actually pinched into hooker. It's a really, really heads up round from BBL and key in terms of addressing the weaknesses of this composition from Guild. Guild needs to move quick. They, they can't rely on BBL taking the space elsewhere. And they oh. ultimately have to hedge their bet spread so thin in the default to prevent it. Now clearing through the showers. Going to be noting the deeper hold now coming out from BBL. And actually safe going to pop the ultra maybe facilitate the cross itself for simply uh, cause paranoia yeah. for now. I mean, you don't want to be the person forced to try and plant the spike here. There's no, no safe spot no. without Sage Wall. But it looks like it might even just be a little bit of a fake here. Look it, how it's, deep they're holding. It's drawn everyone from BBL. Everyone. The Seekers are actually going to make them believe that there are still bodies stacked up behind this. There, there will be a time limit, though, because now it's because, okay, they're, they're, they should be dealt with. Again, this is, this is very hard to paint a full picture. If you're BBL here... You're sat kind of second guessing right now. There hasn't been that follow up punch, so there hasn't been anyone noted, any steps hurt, anything else towards A. So they will eventually peel these players back. You already saw very early on, Poor has gone back to his duty. And that is enough of at least a reminder that, hey, okay, it's not just this A piece, but it's, it's a double, double pump. pump. I hate that we both said that. We both said it at the same time, but it actually is. They're going to come back towards short here. Kushner posted up, he smoked off. 
The smoke forces him forward, but he has to back away. He takes the TP, but he's going to know the players. But by now, they've got the site. And they still have that ult in play. This is sick from Guild. The double pump to the plant is perfect. Spike and now they're in the post plant. What do they have left? Well, they've got a lot of players, to say the least. Cold still Immense, got the still with the molly, but Pora. Pora, this could be it. This is the difference. Challenging those post plants is massive. Taking away Cold Mentor from this gives you options. But you still have to clear the rest of the map. Actually, the res is going to come through on Dame DLL as well. The five strong in this retake here. What can BBL get done? Well, Leo's still in the smoke, though. He's still playing in the ult itself. The tap on the spike, but no commitment, of course. Dame DLL gets the reveal. He's actually going to find Ross, but look at the lockdown. Safe and Leo still being so diligent towards that spike plant. And now it's just safe, and he can do no more, but time is going to be a factor. As he looks around for the side, he's got it. Four is gone. I thought he was done in that, but Safe played it so well. The patience being shown, Mike, was unreal. And a beautiful round to watch. Credit to Cold Amenta actually baiting out. Two flashes come through from Pora, by the way. When that when that clock starts ticking for BBL, Pora actually preemptively rotates back towards B. He sends one flash to Uka. It doesn't catch anything in market or outside on sand. The second one catches contact on Fountain. That forces Aslan back towards B site. A guild have the perfect read as soon as that happens they re-hit a it's actually beautiful to watch that one for the minimap that was nice that was really there's, nice. There's so much paranoia built from this Viper's pit as well BBL, oh, with, sure. BBL are scrambling to prevent a spike going down uh, purely due to how much post plant utility guild have in this composition they have to scramble they have to get bodies on the line to prevent the spike from going down and even like beyond that, like, like Gil just played a beautiful round, but look how close I got. It was still a 1v1 at the very end of it. Yeah. Like it was still super close. Like BBL, and this is the thing, If you, it, it feels like maybe an unfair comparison to an extent. But if you watch on Focus's early games, so many close moments, so many close score lines, but just couldn't quite convert, right? And we're seeing BBL getting close. You know, the economy has been such a bad spot for so many of these rounds and Constantly trying to push, but they just they've just been pipped to the post, right? Guild across the board are looking super solid. And I like what we're seeing. Like, okay, yeah, we still have that individual like impact from your like some like treks out there, you have nice clutches coming out from your safe as well. Everything looking good. But you know, pound for pound, you're seeing some of those moments for BBL, but just to get across the line, you see that theory coming into practice. Oof. <laughs> you should actually forced out here with the knife. Pora keen to go explore now. And look at the clock. Look at when this is happening for BBL now. They're eager to challenge the early round. Do back away, though. No confirmation of presence outside. But look at the stack. Our guild going to be able to get a read on this. I mean, there's only a Guardian and a Ghost to, to come up against. For well, the Headhunter as well from Kuchina, a second Guardian. There it is. But do they walk into this stack, Lauren? I mean, surely, <laughs> surely you're thinking, oh, this feels weird. He's being really peaky, is Bora. And well, with the knife coming out, sadly, one of the Guardians was removed. And MDLL, a good attempt, but it doesn't matter. Guild walk into the stack and walk out with only one loss. I was going to say, Keisha, actually, yeah, one away from the Tour de Force here, so... A lot for a rifle here. We'll have it available in the next, but there's not an awful lot else left for BBL. There's no cushion behind this purchase. The Viper's bit, yes, but we're coming into the last round of the half. It's going to be tricky if BBL don't win this, Lauren. Guild no, it certainly is. already stacked up. We've got the advantage in terms of the ultimates as well, in my eyes. Yeah, for me, I, I, I think the worry really starts to mount when obviously two of the rounds that BBL were able to convert was just off the pistol as well. Kushina. No oh, way, Kushina! Oh, they were literally right over his head. They did not see him. They did not check on him. He was suppressed the entire time. Just had to sit there and wait and watch, and it worked so perfectly. Saying. The blink of the eye, the round's done. There is nothing that Russ can do about this. Kushina just had a round to pop off. Back's turned and takes pure advantage. It's so filthy as well. Just standing underneath the box, like you said. They waterfall over his head. Finds all four. Give him the ace at this point. Get the clip. <laughs> Smoke down and not even sure actually if Russ is noted off the first flash in the round, but seems to have a pretty good idea. Don't be shy, Kushina. Go on. Go on. 
Are you really going to draw this out? Come yeah, on, mate. come on. It's, it's your round. Don't make the... The clip will look weird clip. if you look exactly. at the clock. Exactly. Come on. Oh. We're oh. so good. Oh, that's a there bad miss. That's a bad miss. <laughs> what a Girls. round, though. I mean, yeah, that's, it, that's one hand. that's going to be... It's, it's a little bit of a, a kick in the shin if you're Guild, but, man, for BBL, they could do with one of these. And, they, like, literally stepped on him. Oh, the fact Cold Adventure just catches a stray as well, just swings through the wall. <laughs> well, I mean, actually, now if BBL finishes out 7-5, as Hey, totally different look. An he's, absolute he's lifeline for them. Yeah, Guild, force as well. Yeah, Oof. Guild could have absolutely battered them in this last round in terms of the finances here, but... <laughs> the possibility of coming into this and having just the pistol round and round two to be able to tie things up. Aslan now a little more cautious, a little more diligent here. Walling early, doesn't want to give away the opportunity for a pick. And as three, they're going to walk through showers again. Dangerous games being played here. There's two players on the other side. This isn't uncontested. It's just holding deeper. And that's now we're starting to, yeah, peel away quick if you're them. And the close flash. But actually, it's the swing from Rust. When it goes wide, Kushin is there to catch it. So that's a big battle won. And it looks like they want to try and readdress, but already that TP taken, Kushin is everywhere at once. Well, the crazy thing being, actually, Kushin gets back to heaven there, so he's in a position to pick up the short angle. He just leave Aim DLL and Turco both posting up in showers. The beauty of a chamber. Two will be noted here. You can see two suppressed towards B side. Actually, Guild don't make a move off that just yet. If Spike semi committed back towards A. They're re-clearing showers. Deeks is going to come in. They get dealt with quite quickly. And Paul is left it, it, struggling. And, and Aslan's not in a better yeah. position. Oh, this, but look at the spike. It's with Cold Amenta. Cold Amenta could be dead. Okay, there's still a, a big road to recovery here for BBL after what was a really foul loss on B. And it's that. It's the couple of kills they just had. 13 seconds. 13 seconds. They want to buy time. Turco going to put down the Molly. He's just trying to buy a couple of seconds. Kushner on the case. And Turco's there. They've got just enough to play with Mike. That is recovery in the scoreline. Absolutely. I almost think Guild are overthinking it by the end of that half. It was working for them stacking up other than that one round, which is an anomaly for Kushner to find those four kills, but almost overcooking it towards the end of that first half. Still come out two rounds ahead, but BBL with a chance to tie things up here, honestly, with a pistol round win. It's all fair game here. Yeah, the other thing is, uh, this this composition for BBL is going to be extremely difficult on the attack. I mean, with the lack of the raid, yes. a, a, a traditional duelist, I should say, we'll, we'll, we'll remove the chamber discussion for another time. But mm -hmm. this composition will be very difficult. It relies ultimately on a very similar win condition to Guild, right? Getting to a post-plant situation. Mm -hmm. Let's see how they plan to get there. Early intentions. <laughs> the fight for showers off the rip. Yep. Feels similar. <laughs> Feel like we've seen this before. It's weird seeing BBL not investing at all into a frenzy. I feel like I even just won. How dare you? And Guild. Just going to sit back towards site for now. Don't want to give away openings or opportunities. Gave up showers control after that initial exchange. And it looks like, yeah, Kushner will be suppressed in this. So, classic's not a bad gun. Don't worry. It still looks like this tentative A piece. They haven't explored anywhere else. Trex is peeling away from this, though. Why? I'm not sure, because they don't have any... Yeah, I don't know what the tell was for that. Yeah. Or um, anything, if I'm honest. Um, plant yet to come in. I think they'll tap is. it out just to wait for the yeah. paint shell there, but Trex already rotating away means it's not going to come. So we'll get themselves into a 5v5 post plant here. Okay. Double stack. Or do you halt? I'm out of stuff. Flash gonna go. Dog exchange. Aura still has vision. Still able to find safe, but a good trade out for Guild. Finding too quickly back, but bear in mind there is still time for these post plants, and that's what we're waiting on. How do you clear that back line? I'm the with second snake Viper as well. and with someone like Brimstone, how are you gonna get past this? Russ already goes down, and the trades are not good enough here, Trex. I mean, what? What? Excuse me? What? what? What are you doing? What are you? 
Surely not. Surely there's no, no time. He's not got it. Not, okay, 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 okay. I don't, like that, Mike. For I don't like that, Mike. I don't like that at all, I mean, Mike. I, it makes me feel weird. I don't, I don't know if they... Unless they just, they're just big brain, they knew the timing. Exactly. They knew that he couldn't get it, right? You'd what? hope so. Uh, there was no second spike tap, so I don't know why they would just desperately swing that. Yeah, this scares the life out of me. Oh. oh, wait, did he... I'm not sure if he just accidentally double tapped the spike there. He might have had that if he stuck the first tap. I don't know if that's a UI bug or what, but... You could see him raise up first for oh the diffuser. I don't know if that was a double tap on the spike. Yeah. <laughs> oh, BBL will be thanking the lucky stars if they watch that back. Oh, yeah. and, and Trex has had a little fat finger, but at that point, I mean, yeah, it's so much time burnt up already from that post plant utility. That. That's got me nervous. It's really got me nervous. Now, yeah, gonna... uh, I mean, BBL need to know their timings on that. They, 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 they need to be absolutely confident. So that, that is concerning to see yeah. in the first round, right? If that's going to be their main win condition. This is good. No danger found here in this, you know, little pistol investment from Guild. Five still stand for BBL. And if you're a BBL fan, you want to see it kept this way, right? Try and build the economy. Because you saw in that first half, they were left in tatters more often than not. The money was just really slipping through their fingertips throughout so many of these rounds. So hopefully for them, build up a nice nest egg. Safe trying to do terrible things. Aslan could be on the receiving end. Actually, MDLL going to get contact and there's a swing. Nicely handled. And Leo, last one alive, and he's over towards CT. So this should be five standing. There it is. Nice. Got that's, yourself a BBL. That's a big boom as well to tie things up with a flawless. A really good shot here at the bonus round as well. See ultimate progress. Not quite there yet, but they should have it on. Well, it should be there or thereabouts for their first buy round at least, Lauren. And then obviously you look around in the future whether or not they've got the tool to force to offset that. If they do suffer any losses. BBL in a really good position here in the second half. Necessary as well. Let's see how this bonus looks. So that one rifle, Fusion has got it. Everyone else on the Spectres. We won't see. Nothing really noted on the initial exchange of utility there, but Kushin are going to start building his way towards showers now. They're already ahead of the smoke. But do they clear Leo diligently? Yes, they do. Good trade, though, for Cold Dementor. The rifle will be able to be filtered back through, so Turco this time will be able to pick it up. Big upgrade to find here. In their bonus round. The trade off as well. Trex has got to be careful not to get caught here. A little exchange of damage. Paint Shell going to try and catch poor inside the Trailblazer, but no damage done yet. And burns up the molly, so a lot of guild stall already invested here towards showers. Four members of BBL stacked up behind this as well. Right, there's the flash. But I'm curious how they intend to clear someone like Cordamenta well. I guess you can just four put the there of the wall. now. And there it is. You can't clear Cordamenta if no one's going to be coming up towards short. He gets carte blanche on this. Now, plant goes in, but the, the other three are going to be harder to find. Cordamenta now gets checked on oh. in the timing. Aslan, great work from him to be able to clear that so diligently. A little bit of, you know, timing on his side, but you take it when you get given it. Flashes are plenty for Russ. And the molly comes in. I, say, I still see two snake bites as well, Lauren. Yeah. This would be hard. Effective. Gotta wait to see if they come out to play. Oh, hang on. Um, this is making me nervous because it's on halfway. All about to break. Name DLL and safe up against each other, but time now. The spike do get to halfway. Keep that in the back of your mind. But aim DLL needs to play this to the second this time. Tap on the spike is done. Safe. No. Valiant attempt. But not today. And so they actually convert the bonus here, put themselves around ahead. So a great start in the second half here for BBL. That economy will prosper. And still actually with a full purchase behind this. I'm pretty sure everybody should be sitting. 16, 1700 credits and above. So, now what we we're talking about earlier, the tour de force, I think he's two away now, Kushina. 
So another tool to offset that purchase set. I thought, actually, yeah, with seeing MDLL drift back towards short, uh, I thought there was a chance he'd maybe miss out the opportunity to make use of those snake bites, mm. but just come through regardless. A bit of investment on the side of Guild here, at least Scrappy, the Bucky, the Spectre. A frenzy in the mix as well. As Guild looked to want to stack up and deny this showers control from BBL now. Ooh, tough in this round though. Ooh, this could be a chance for the punish. There is lovely work from Kushin. It keeps that safe. Started to get a little messy in there, but no worries. We kept fine in the end. Still sitting on about, what, 40 HP? Swings it, gets it, Russ goes down. This is lovely. And a wide swing's going to get you nothing this time, Leo. Cold Amenta. I mean, it's a Bucky. And that's about it. Are you in the Bucky fan club? It used to be. Not not so much anymore. Not anymore. No. No, not since... You haven't fallen for the sliggy hopium about it? No, not not since the last 10-meter ping nerf. Got you. Got the thing, you. it literally used to be an operator at, at like, 10-meter range. Reasonable things. Yeah. Doubt he's but even going to get close enough to make <laughs> it work. Yeah, we'll see. But now, though, I am... Uh, I, I... I'm waiting with basic breath because this is when I, I look to uh, a little bit of longevity. How does Guild look once they get that full buy coming back in? Ornament is going to give it up. That's fine. I just... Uh, EBL have shown a little bit more resilience than I honestly thought because I think most of us watching throughout the regular season have been a bit hit and miss with BBL because as I said, it always feels like they're just that step away, be it, you know, losing a couple of weird scenarios here and there, not quite having, you know, some of the, the standard things falling into place for them, but you always see the potential. You always think, God, that, that lineup's absolutely mad. You know, there's so much, so much capability there. But it's always just fallen short. So again, for me, I'm quite excited if this is when it starts actually working out for them. But I still look at Guild as someone who's been formidable throughout this season. Yeah, and I feel as if, the difficult thing is here is the uh, guild are, are willing to stack up and take these fights, but mm. BBL actually overcoming them in that scenario, which is a little concerning with with where we've seen guild make such improvements. I mean, unanswered yeah. as of yet in the second half. Was well, not guild are going to continue to try and contest this? The timer has I, stopped, so I'm not sure if we've. Uh, I assume it's a timeout. Yeah. A bold assumption to be making yeah. at this point. No, um, nothing's gone grey just yet. I'm kind of hoping it does soon. But no, I, I, you'd imagine this could be a guild timeout at this point. Could You've got be, yeah. Bly coming back in. I said, it, it would it, make sense. Uh, here is where you'd think guild are probably going to make a decision of, of whether or not they do want to continue contesting this because BBL are winning out. Yes. And eventually you have to cut your losses, right? Or come up with a, something, a, an adjustment. You can't just keep repeating the same thing. So I, I, how do we, I guess on this map... How many reps do these teams have in that regard of, you know, where's that depth going to come from? Oh, it's a technical. Great. It's my favorite one, Mike, because it could just be forever. Mm. Who's not moving? All of them. <laughs> Somebody's um, spraying. Oh. How's your day been, Mike? Pretty good. Yeah. Pretty good so far. Yeah. Camera's not working. I've ruined yeah, the whole show. Yeah, your camera wasn't working today. Yeah. It's had a day off. I love that. I shouldn't really be admitting this actually because it's almost like I'm the one that has technical problems. It does. You did just make it sound I like that. I did it, didn't just you? make it sound like that. It's not the case. It is this, apparently connection issues in the server. For yeah, this one one's players, not my so. fault for once. Well, no, um, I do. I do. I do. I do. I do, nice start, I do still really like every time I see this, you see where it's a right. technical pause and then pause is kind of like grayed out a little bit, transparent. Right. Should just say pan pock there. It's like technical pause and pan pock in the back. It'd be a really I mean, nice I'm touch. always down for branding. I think that'd be nice. It, I, was, I was really hoping someone took the graphics away to redo it then, and I just realised the time we'll, has We'll started. have a chat with Enrico. So. We'll see what Enrico, we can get done. Enrico, let's uh, put, put uh, Panpot on that faded out pause at the back of the technical timeout next time. That'd be nice. It's a nice little, little touch. Thank you very much. Uh, Roger that. Um, but it just seems as though whatever the issues are have been uh, resolved enough to get this one back underway. So hopefully we can kind of lean back into what we were looking at, right? And just, you know, to kind of get our heads back in the game. BBL have been pretty dominant so far. They've been doing everything they need to. Mike, you highlighted they got to get into the post plants. They got to be looking good at this, keep that money looking solid. And they've ticked every box. Well, I think as well, that's why Guild have a tendency to want to contest the early round, right? They don't want BBL to rely on the same win condition they had. It's going to be the first time 
Actually, their BBR going to explore towards B on one him? of these buy rounds. Mm. Stim goes out, but it... actually, weirdly enough, Aslan throws a slow that prevents them advancing. It looks like a little bit of a pump, actually, as Kushin has found space in showers here. Right. Leo's tucked up, though. Actually, doesn't cast Kushin here, and we'll be able to put the fragment in. It's going to slow things down even more. Ooh, the There's utility. so much stall. Yeah, that's huge. The fact that they still had Viper and KO here, they've been able to buy time, which is so valuable for rotations, but Boris still going to win out, finds Leo. Going to continue forward as well, but there's more to clear. You can see where Safe sat. Kushin doesn't win that fight. Safe's going to grab it. And that should, well, I mean, it's a little bit more dangerous of a plan, but they get it regardless. That is now ticking in their favor. Molly goes in towards New Hall, and it's looking good for that time. You're going to have to look at Guild, finding new options, and you're right. Leo's back up. So this is awkward, though, with the weather vipers pit in the spike just outside. They've got to win one of these fights. <laughs> That's how you do it, I guess. And the spike is out the side of it. So you're right in noting it. But again, look at the lineups. MDL are going to find Leo and it's Russ with the shutdown. I'm going to find two right back and he's going to be called a mentor on the diffuse. Oh, it's all good. It's all good. Diffuse actually coming through this time. A lot of time to spare as well. I'm not even sure actually yeah. where the snake bites were invested from. Whether or the poison orb was even down there. I didn't even know that in the chaos, but yeah. Guild finally swing through, find themselves a, a retake. But I gotta say, Leo, as soon as he pops an old command there, he just needs to stay alive until those smokes deplete. Uh, mm -hmm. Like whilst those smokes are still up, there's no reason for him to even risk getting picked off there. I mean, if some, somebody on the side of BBL is stupid enough to push that smoke, it, it's it's a freebie for him, but I, I, I'm not I'm not sure why he's 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 swinging on that smoke. It doesn't make an awful lot of sense to me. Do you want to make sense to me? Now's the time to try mm. out that pan pock thing. Mm. So you see where it says technical pause? That's fine. But in the background, we just change it over. Now, obviously, the problem is it's happened very quickly, right? Because we want these graphics done nicely, right? You need that adjustment time. I don't want it to rush it. No, exactly. It, it, needs, it needs to be made as best it can be. So at some point, we might get treated to it. For now, we, we stare at the traditional sense of things. Now, I, that was still somewhat um, scrappy enough that I'm not like, oh, well, Guild are fine. They, you know, no, no, corrected. no. I still um, didn't feel like it was, that, oh, cool, Guild have, Guild have got it yeah. down now. They can replicate no. that. Yeah, I'm not quite sold yet uh, in that regard. Um, you know, Leo popped the ult, still managed to get his life back for that. But, uh, you know, looking at the stall that came in towards Shows, a couple of things went down very favorably um, towards Guild there. And oh, this one looks like a longer pause. What's the plan, Enrico? What are we doing here? What are we, what are we up to? This is going to be fun. Okay, okay. So they're just going to be resetting the round. Fair enough. All right, we like I, the I, updates. I, I think the technical pause came through as the spawn barrier dropped. So I ah. think it is a, a round remake. You love it when they leave it that late, Mike. Yeah. yeah. That's good. That's good. You, you really leave people second guessing. Um, So hopefully it shouldn't take too long to get everything started back up. Um, do you remember the days when they manually had to try and get back to where oh, they were? Oh, yeah, I love those, those days. Those were the days. Those were, those were the days. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, you know. That was sure always was... us. That was, we that we was used to us. have this conversation with Mitch and Thomas, just like, yeah, we never get those chrono breaks. It's so weird. Yep. Yep. Yeah, it was just... Uh, and we'd have two I, I, a day. <laughs> I just loved the, like, the speed in which they essentially implemented match medic. Yes. Because yeah. it was like, guys, we can't have 40-minute breaks. It was like the, the the quickest thing I've ever seen them implement. It was like next next event comes around, like right, we've got it, guys. We can we can start from the last round. Like no, nice. we really missed an opportunity. We should have just uh, just uploaded those those tech tech pauses as podcasts. I, I mean, there's the yeah, but I feel like kids just want TikTok these days. Yeah, they might. They want I mean, we could have we could have made at least then. sixty TikToks out of our technical breaks. It's true. Now that's that's what we actually should have done. Damn, really Fun missed it. Ah, uh, yeah, we, and, and no one remembers those days anymore. No. You know, the Zoomers move on, the iPad kids just sitting there, need that 10 second hit of dopamine, and then they move on. It's, it's rough out here. Um, but um, yeah, I, I don't know how long this is going to take. But oh, Enrico, are we going to a break? Is it time? Enrico? Oh, fabulous. You know what, guys at home? I want you to get to know Enrico with us as well, because he is the savior of these shows most of the time. And he has told us very kindly that you don't have to listen to us for a couple of minutes, maybe. So we're going to go to a short break, and when we're back, the game will be ready. Who's next? Thank you. 
And we're back, and we've been told that this will be resolved soon. Now, I do still see a technical pause, which makes me slightly nervous, Mike, but Enrico would never lie to us. No. Never. No. There's absolutely no chance of that. But, mm -hmm. I mean, coming to this now, this is at the point of the map where I, I think, I mean, it was mentioned in the previous guild, ultimately they need to make a decision, right, of how they want to play this, because... BBR mm. ultimately winning out in, in some of these early engagements. I mean, the guild don't have the bodies for these retakes. Uh, they're, they're not doing enough damage on the way in, and I don't think it's mm. even really burning up a lot of the utility that's that's going to give BBR that post-plant kind of comfort. So I, I'm intrigued to see here what, what the response is from guild, because now's the time to switch something up. I mean, they've had the benefit of having a little bit of time to now put some thought into it. Ultimates, yeah, well, you Viper's bit, yes, they can maybe counter stress. some of this. Early map control on a side, but it's not invested off the rip to all the force pop from Kushina. See what he can get done with it this time around. He's been good for it throughout the map so far. Preemptively, Leo going to head across, well, at least towards spawn. He's in a position, maybe I don't know if he was just going across to send a knife anywhere, but Spike not committed anywhere. BBL just going to be probing for a pick here. And looking at the positioning, Guild sitting relatively deep, excluding... It's Trex, who's a little bit posted forward, but you can see Leo's sitting quite far back. Safe, similar scenes. See how cautiously they play this, because, of course, after hearing that Tour de Force pop, you, you are going to be on on edge just a little. And actually, it looks like they're going to be investing early into this. Now, question is where? And there's going to be the first signs of life coming out, and there's the ult to follow, but it doesn't really catch much at this point. An underhand flash, but his name DLL to catch Trex. He was the player who was close up. Now, bear in mind, the other two was sat slightly deeper. Yes, Leo's leant forward, but the wall's going to keep them pretty much somewhat safe from everything excluding that. TP taken. That's a spike on the way. And look at Ross. He's going to catch the cross. It's huge positioning. A quick flash to follow. He knows there's more, but he doesn't overpeak. Great work, and it buys time for rotations. Oh, Brimmy's going to be towards Ooh. CT, but Turco, big pickup that alleviates some of the problems. Yeah. Now, the Molly did go in, but there's 12 seconds. Is there time to be bought here? They're going to be scolded on the way out. Eight seconds now. Forrest cleared cold to mentor. Leo has to play this just right. Four seconds, and they're going to try and get that plant down. Turco desperate for this. And the spikes planted, but oh, Gil just about in the right places there. That was a scramble at the end. It was, and the Viper's bit invested. Ultimately, it doesn't even cover default. It's just for him to get out of that cubby spot. I mean, Colomenta has the judge there. I'm not sure if he... I, I didn't quite catch how many smokes he had. He smokes off Hookah. He then throws the molly underneath the smoke mm -hmm. just to slow things down, and he's only about half a second away from delaying it, but... Gives away his life on default there. I'm not sure if we'll catch it here on... Uh, actually, just afterwards, Pora did find him, but... Luckily, Guild able to stabilize here. And Aim DLO almost caught in no man's land from the swing. Out of the Viper's Pit. But uh, again, it's not comfortable, right? What a Guild come away from that learning. Uh, yeah. Trex gets hard cleared on top of the box as well, which is kind of crazy. I'm not sure if there was a pixel out of place with the, the player highlight above that Viper wall, but... Mm. Great clearance from AIMDLL there. But again, look, looking back at that, it, it doesn't look as if Guild have made too much of an adjustment, right? They're still willing to give away an opening engagement. Uh, I mean, I say give it away. Trex is unfortunate to get cleared there. It's, it's great work from AIMDLL, but... I mean, in that round, you think about it, you, the orbital strike's the yep. only thing that really stops the plant coming through on A. True. That's the only thing that actually changes that. So it's not something a guild can bring into the next round. Mm -mm. No, you're right. And I think we talk about the ability to find um, repetition and getting out of this. And and uh, I would say still BBL have been showing that they can get that spike to side. They, you know, aside from those couple of rounds. Now, I do f feel that we've had more pauses in gameplay so far. So hopefully... We can get, you know, kick things back off. I really want to see the rhythm of this game actually find its footing because so far it's been kind of hard to quantify a couple of these rounds. And we have to look at Guild now to maybe double down on this capability to actually deny what BBL have been up to. And BBL can still fashion a purchase. We've got to say, this is probably the most we've seen Guild struggle in terms of having a grasp of the macro mm -hmm. in any series so far. And it's one of the unlikely 
characters to be the ones challenging that in the form of BBL. A credit to them in that regard. Very widespread default here this time around from BBL. No stack up to, to force an engagement here. Coldamenta still donning this judge. What's the trademark for him these days? A good, decent read on it this time around. Trex is already preemptively rotating back towards eight. 45 second mark approaching here as BBL look to stack up here. Late smoke invested towards shower, but. That's another. If Coldamenta commits. I'd say another 20 seconds burn up here yep. towards showers. Molly gonna come in. Oh. Somewhere. Molly's going somewhere. Not where it wanted to be. Oh. 30 seconds left. Oh, it's fumbly. Trax is on the case, though, quite fortunately for uh, Guild's sake, because that was a problem. Oh, no, oh, Trax. man, this is, this is horrible to watch. And Safe's just, he's in no man's land. He's He's got Leo eventually coming over, but he's not that close. Now, Rush is on a bit of a lurk, but again, how do you clear these close positions? Safe's fallen. It's pretty much on Russ and Leo to do something unheard of here. No, Turco's all too aware of this. And just a concophony of errors, it felt like, in that one, Mike. The molly going astray, the timing for Trex. I mean, BBL will take those opportunities with both hands and go, yeah, absolutely. Trex is so unlucky there as well. I'm not sure if after he gets that kill, if the right decision with, the, with what's left on the clock, it's like 20 seconds for BBL to scramble yeah. to get towards sight there. Whether or not just preemptively popping that showstopper, he gets himself into a... A really awkward position where he's hard cleared once again. That just loses out on the ultimate without even getting to invest it. That's that's a really tough loss here in round mm -hmm. 19 for Guild because the money's going to be struggling. The, the, the ultimate's invested in the last few rounds. Yeah, yeah. From these ultimates, Mike. Like, not even close. I mean, Leo? I mean, maybe? I, I hate to say it, but entering round 20 with where the finances sit for BBL, if it's clean. Mm -hmm. That that could be the map right there. I know it sounds it it's, it's very early to call it, but Guild you, you see how the yeah Guild have basically got one buy round left. Like uh, they're they're in a really <laughs> tricky spot here with with no ultimates in sight. I mean Leo's two off the the null command, but that feels uh, like a long way away still. It hasn't been a huge deterrent for BBL no. where we've seen it previously invested. No, it's not. It's not been one. Thank you for moving. Don't Kishina. show me an AFK yeah, don't, player. Don't be doing that. Whoever did that. That's, that's Mel. I'm actually livid. For now though, Guild opting to leave that A short route somewhat open. Um, hmm. He's gonna move soon, right? Yeah. I, I mean, I would hate for this to be how Guild get their 10th, to be honest. You can see BBL oh. apprehensive to make moves just yet, but... Trex has oh, given one away. Leo, good to swing back through. Actually, Leo, good for the second as well. Spike He's still noted. not moving. He's absolutely cooked, isn't he? So it's on Turco and Bora. The underhand flash, Leo. Slides on out. And Kushina is just, just not there. So he should be on board with potentially Bora here, who's trying to play guard duty and well. 30 seconds left. Not going to cast that one with too much... Nope. Uh, Vigor. We'll see if they've so, got the graphic ready, right? Come on. Because I think we're uh, we're about oh, to have another coming, one. It's coming, Mike. It's coming. You yeah, ready for it? You hate to see it because that is, uh, like I said, that's, round. that's such an influential round on on how the, the, the rest of this timeline should have played out for BBL. Yeah. <clears throat> um, Enrico, do we have a break ready? Is that what you're telling me? Oh, fantastic news. Well, during this break, right, we haven't really told you what to do, but I would say we're going to give Sliggy a challenge. I want you to now outline how this game closes down. You're at 10-10. Guild just got themselves a, a nice little, uh, maybe a freebie. I don't want to stick with that too much um, <clears throat> at this point, but close out the game for us, Sliggy. I, I, want, I want predictions from you as to how this one goes down and, and what you've been seeing so far. So we are going to go to that break and when we're back. Hopefully the game will be good to go and Kushina will be moving around. Who's next? Dare to challenge. 
Who's next? Okay, so <clears throat> as you can see on the scoreboard, we have rolled it back to a 9-10 scoreline. Um, again, not worth us diving in too much as to what we saw, because uh, I think it's the first real time, for my eyes at least, we saw Guild trying something a little different, which is a little unfortunate. Um, oh, well, on the, both sides, it, I think. It, exactly. Yeah. That's, that's the thing that really... So I hope it just, you know, we, we can just kind of rip the band-aid off and just jump back in, right? We, we can't really dwell on that. Um, hopefully Sliggy's uh, prediction has cursed this game, so BBL should win it, um, unless his prediction comes true, which would be Guild actually convert it. Um, but jumping back in, Mike, I mean, we've got to hear a rifle kind of we rolled it back to the start of this round, so it, this should be a BBL conversion, right? Should be, this time around, with five people in the server, yeah. They're uh, stacking up towards Hooker this time around, so Russ will be put under a lot of pressure now. I mean, whether or not he's even got the information here with an early flash, I'm not sure. I mean, that, the flash in kind from Pora will be enough. The dog's going to come through, and actually, they're going to stim through on this. They're probably going to swing onto him. There should be a lot of players noted, so they should respond swiftly. to this track's going to try and get over there quick. You've got two players just instantly putting bodies ideally into the right place, but keep in mind the BBL have players here, right? Gunned up absolutely fine. Leo's done well. Leo's the only one with that rifle, so... If he doesn't find it, I don't know who will, and he's putting up a damn good go of it. Oh. You start to see Leo getting a little bit of a heater going there, but it is BBL to get the 11th, and Guild will be left on 9. I said, this was the concern I had with where the the finances sat. Guild actually come into this with uh, way less, actually. I didn't even note the, uh, the, the reinvestment after Force it. We'll see Evander in the hands of Leo, but yeah, Guild come into this now mm. with just classics. Like I said previously, that round was pivotal. I'm, I'm assuming now that's actually incorrect. Looking back at the the UI, we'll have to see exactly how it does sit for for Guild. But yeah, I can see Guild have got rifles here, so that is just a bug. I was Oof. questioning whether or not they had reinvested into that previous, but. Safe, got to be careful not to get caught off guard here behind his poison orb. Oh, we've got the full UI extension. Look at this. All the information, Mike. That's the update. I was going to say, that's what I was <laughs> expecting after that round. I, I assumed they hadn't reinvested in that previous, but with Leo yeah. donning a Vando, I thought it would have been strange if they did. Trex immediately removed, though. And Trex, he, uh, normally he's, he's quite good at playing that balance of a little bit of aggression dabbled in, but he's been punished now twice towards that A site in quite early fashion. And he's absolutely pouring down behind me. I do apologize if you uh, do hear the heavens opening currently, which is great. Obviously very dramatic for this game. As uh, BBL once again eyeing up this A site, there are the three players here. Trex was noted early on. He did get bound as well. And now a little bit of stool to come out. This is... A little different, a little bit of a fight back. They should have noted a great deal of these players. They're flashed up, they should still be able to get a plan. And Aslan catching Leo and Russ towards you haul That's a plan, and that's that's comfort now. They are in a really good position. Oh, yeah, only two members of Guild remaining. <laughs> Highly unlikely here in the retail, which we're already seeing. Safe, get the hell out of Dodge here. Try and hold on to, I think, an operator he had in his hands. Judgmenta just going to come back through. Lamps try and find something, I imagine, but it's not going to be worth an awful lot here. As you're going to try and dip away and try and hold on to that, I think. Let's see if they can keep hold of these weapons. Safe and cold Amenta. It's the name of the game. I like this aim DLL POV screen. It's good. And that's that. I need to go make sure my windows are actually fully shut right now, Mike, because it is really raining, that's really point. raining, and I don't want a swimming pool in my kitchen. So I'll be back in a moment's time, and I'll leave you to start this one up, because that looks like it could be... Oh, no, we're good. We've got the UI. We're fine. We're right back. As I said, now BBL find themselves on, on map point. Guild actually going to call a timeout here to reconsider. Not an awful lot to work with. They have the null command. We already noted previously that... This ult cycle did not favor Guild whatsoever. And Trex is going to be struggling to get anything, even an SMG and light armor here. 
does have the benefit of having a little utility kept across with falling so early in the previous round. Rust as well at 3,200. It's oh, not going to be pretty. Oh, this Michael, is where I guild... back down. And I'm seeing a great screen, Mike. What's happened here? Get a guild of called a timeout. Okay, okay, good. I got a little nervous. I didn't see, you know, the full description. So that's good news. That's excellent. Probably rightly so as well. Yeah, like, like I was saying, this is really guild trying to, I guess, piece something together whether or not they're going to try and get a little proactive here. The, the purchase is not going to sort the, really suit them at all. The, the ultimate's uh, still lacking. We've been talking about that for the last few rounds now. And with how clean it's been from BBL, no real ult progress to write home about on the side of guild either. I'm, I'm looking at silver linings and clutching at straws because BBL are, 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 are poised now, I feel, Mike. I think we've seen them Toxins going up. showing that they find repetition to this. They find that capability to do it more than once. And I'm worried about Trex again. This could be potentially the first port of call if Leo doesn't swing, which I doubt he would. Toxin screen down. It's safe with the operator. I mean, it's... It's weird and maybe it's wonderful, but we have to wait to see if Gil can do anything with this pretty shoddy purchase. Colomed are already backing away from A here, but I think with the Viper wall going up, you know, that's going to keep him at least curious here. Russ left on an island once again, not found any information with his early flash. Should have another one coming back off cooldown, I imagine shortly here but two flashes from poor are coming through safe actually good for the first here gonna be able to slow down the showers push i mean how i feel like we haven't seen guild get that first pick on this half once and the trade you should have still got cold dementia the trade did come out obviously with a the molly there he stood and burned to death but it's put finally the timing with of the old command advantage. actually oh, stopped right. him from putting the viper's pit down that's huge this could change the outcome and leo's just trying to play his life as well Sit somewhat safe. 14 seconds. There is no comfort to be found here. Ten seconds left. The spike has to go down and you can see it just rifled out. Flash comes in. Five seconds. They swing together. Turco does well, but it's safe to just reign supreme. Eventually trade it out, but the difference maker there, I guess, is safe and that null command coming in, Mike. Yeah, really, really well played from Guild there, honestly. The fragment a little bit off to deny that plant, but... I think they've done enough damage there. And what's key is as well, the, the Null Command actually prevents them from getting the Sage Wall down as well. Not only does it stop the Viper's Pit from coming through, also prevents them from getting a safe plant there. So with that sh Shower's Hold early on, pays dividends for them on the back of Leo's ultimate being popped. Got a lifeline for Guild here, but they've got another two to find to force overtime. You want to play? Let's Benefit play. of the economy coming in line a little bit here, but... Ultimates wise, it's only Viper's Pit to work with. Trex now donning the Operator. And pick up this Shower's control here. He's sure on the other side of things with a Tour de Force. Trex has got to get out of that. And he's lucky to. This is, this is giving me heart palpitations at this point. That sort of play, man. Just And Trex has fallen first a couple of times. And Okay, a little deeper off angle. Kushner would have to clear pretty wide on this, but an adjustment from Trex now. The Viper's Pit on one side, Trex on the other, and Kushner, he's been good for this. <sighs> Tense moments now. But I am looking at the rest of BBL, Mike. They're looking another way. They're starting to explore other options. Not really showing too much presence to what oh. Leo actually gets caught with the flash there. Executioner punishes that aggression. That's actually going to be the green light for BBL to progress towards B site here. 30 seconds. Okay, the ult. Okay, and I maybe did like the quick plan, but it doesn't do much beyond that. Excuse me, that was just to clear the site. Quite going to go down. And a 4v4 now. Trex playing from CT, finding no impact with this operator really. What do they have to clear these positions? I guess it's a little uncomfortable beyond that Viper ult, but... God, I meant just found one. That's Aslan. The red's removed already. Where on earth did he get that from? Okay, Coldermenter with a follow-up. 
guild. As if this is the time you start to find a little bit of that magic. Oh, comes in to try and clear some of these players out, force them into long, but surely you check on this little pocket. The see, oh! Anyway, he's still giving it a damn good go, but it will be the diffuse with Cold Dementor. These rounds are looking just chaotic, Mike. Huge swing to get the Orbital Strike available there, and the Seekers invested, obviously, to find the last player. They had to throw everything they had at that round. Now, actually, BBL back in a precarious position here. I mean, Aim Dealer down 3,100. I think he should be able to get... Some support, yep. Poor is actually going to be able to spread the wealth a little bit as well as Kushina. But it costs Guild everything. BBL as well now down to just the revive. Almost a vanilla round in terms of the ultimates here. One left for Guild to find to force overtime. BBL once more will explore towards B. Now, did they actually note the position and yeah. what weapon Trex had here? It will be now noted, obviously. So the shot is taken. So first contact found and they peel away. A little bit of a utility trade out. Boombot gone. Doggo gone. If you look towards BBL, they've still got a fair amount to play with to at least get themselves on the site if they need it. Double stacked towards showers. Not really found yet. Seeing like a deeper angle for safe actually plays him in somewhat if they do decide to commit to this and don't clear it again. Again, baited in, safe. You Just played in by play. Rust and he needs to stand and he needs to safe deliver. And safe. He's done exactly as required, as requested and as needed for Gil to make it to 12. It's OT. What a huge That's round from safe oh, and the 11th God. hour here for Gil. To force overtime here. I didn't even think. With that one round, I thought it was absolutely done for Guild. Mm. Yeah, here we are. They come back in here. A total reset here for the economy. That's massive. Yeah, actually, the bait is perfect for the first. Actually, Rust gets yeah. traded immediately, but Turco Aslan unable to find safe. And then he punishes the res as well. It's so good. And even just that flash not quite going deep enough to clear that corner, that first flash that comes in off the sky just didn't quite catch it. And then the second, obviously, they note it off the back of what they're going to assume is Russ. And, oh, that was really nicely done. A little setup that, again, they hadn't noted. They was, you know, short on time. They had to commit to it. And now we go again. 12-12. Not until this point, though. You would argue. And DLL's done for. Oh, he's not. How has he got out of that? Magic. If the, if, magic. if the paint on the fragment came through a little earlier, he would have still been blind. But absolutely done for. Trex tries to get in, though. Actually punished there with the snake bite. Brings it to a 4v4, because actually elsewhere, Turco had already rat. fallen. Quite liking this, though, from Pora. Being proactive, even with four alive. It, it feels super risky, because if he falls, then, you know, B is wide open. Well, it, it's, it's high risk, high reward in my eyes, because it, mm -hmm. it allows BBL to maintain this three stack towards A. There's no way Guild come back through and clear this deep in spawn, right? Outside of Fountain, the spike's heading that way, Lauren. I think this it is... might just be Leo that swings through to Fountain <sighs> here. This could be everything. This, this could have some, so much weight on its shoulders, purely this fight alone. And that lack of attention now, that lack of commitment towards A is going to be ringing alarm bells. Pora might be feeling the brunt pretty soon, and it's 30 seconds, but they don't go by Fountain. They're creeping up by left. short. Spike dropped over towards Russ now. He's got no audio Bora. cues to relay. That's, no that's what's important. But he's in the back lines. He's, he's here. He's, he's ready there for quick. it. He is there so fast to this. He can fill this gap so quickly. And they're going to be no... They're going to have no idea he's doing this 10 seconds. How much damage can one man do? Because you are not thinking about this spot yet. You are not thinking about the... <gasps> Leo turned for it. He didn't quite get it in time. And Pora does punish. Now the post plants feel anything other than safe. The Seeker's going to come out, though, and keep Pora at least tamed for oh, now. He's in, in that corner. corner. That could have been punished, but it wasn't. Rust with a follow-up eventually does catch him. And the swing towards CT, safe finds Kushner just eyeing up the site. Game back on in a 3v2. Aslan and AMDLL, though, clutch as they can be. Rust is hitting that form, finding the shots that he needed that were lacking throughout some of this game. Punished by AMDLL, though. 20 HP and two players and a spike that's now smothered in flames. <laughs> and he gets caught.
A little bit of a 1G moment there from MDL. I'll head it back through Chu, but what a round from Russ. Goes absolutely huge when Pora was ultimately in such a powerful position. You, you even noticed that Leo turned for it without even the, the sound cue from a TP or anything. Yeah. He's still considering the possibility because Pora is unnoted to that point. And the fact, I think, actually, that Pora's utility is unnoted. Usually, they're sent out as information probes towards B site. They don't hear any of that. So I, mm. I think they know something's up. This this is wild to me now, though, because you feel it. I, I, I've got to say it. I felt as though BBL had this game. Like, I, before all the timeouts came in, obviously a little unfortunate for Kushner, maybe lost a little of that momentum because, you know, having connection issues and what have you. But he's sitting on 24 to 19. He's been putting up a stellar performance. Um, I, I thought they had this in the bag. I really didn't think we'd be sat here in OT with Guild now picking up the first. I'm, yeah, I'm a, I'm a little bit stunned by this. It's 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 got to be hard for BBL who've called this timeout potentially to talk through whatever options they really have on this side, coming in with fresh eyes hopefully. Because I've got to say it, this side for BBL had been fantastic. This is where they'd really put their work in. It looked quite clean. They got everything they needed, and I didn't feel Guild had a brilliant answer if I'm honest. Mike, I didn't feel like they worked it out yet. They just had a couple of nice pieces. I mean, safe saved them in in the round to bring them into OT. So I, I'm curious to see what the plan is now, because I do feel so BBL hopefully aren't thinking they're out of this, because the, these guys have looked substantially stronger on this side. Indeed, like I said, this is, in my eyes, the most we've seen Guild struggle with yes. certain aspects of their their game plan. Shrex dancing with death once again. Aim DLL found space, though. Look at this. He's has to backfill short. And that's got to tell you so much you've been able to get to this point with no Trex. one checking on you. Trex, Trex is dead. Trex is long dead. Put in the grave, the spray. Russ is good for it. Keeps this tamed where they have lost Trex, and that is something we've gone, gotten used to seeing. And now you're going to need some heroics from two of the players who are on the site if you're a guild fan, if you want it done now. Russ does well. He's starting to activate in OT. He wasn't finding this impact before, but he's found it now. And Guild out of nowhere put just Turco alive. And this is heartbreak for BBL because this game looked like it was all theirs, Mike. Uh, they played a fantastic game here on Bayern. Guild ultimately taken right down to the wire, which has been rare to see them struggle on some of these fundamental aspects of the game. But credit where credit's due, BBL brought a fantastic game today. They certainly did, and, and I thought that game was in the bag for them. However, not the case. Guild dig deep in OT, and we're going to go to a break this time, as planned, and uh, we'll be rejoined by the desk. Bind went in the way of Guild, but it was a hard fought one. I'm your host, Ying Su, and I'm back here with Kakuka and Ryan. I, in another world, I will be standing here telling you guys that it was BBL that actually won that map because I just yeah. want to take a look at a round real quick before we dive into it. Mm -hmm. This was the round that in any other world, BBL would have won. And Kakuka, we spoke about yes. this pre-map. They cannot be doing stuff like this. Yeah, exactly. It's not It's not about throwing it exactly, but it's, it's about when everything comes down, the position that you're going to take. So Viper's Speed is online. They take the plan. The plan is very smart and avoiding, you know, those lineups is going to be inside. But take a look at what Aslan's doing, the position that he's going to take with that rest. He could have, he should have moved to a more, you know, to a safer position to make sure that they can close the game here. But it got extremely complicated. It's not even that. Like, Guild have completely split the site in their favor. And they've backed, like, BBL into a corner. The orbital strike comes in. Yep. And, like, the Red X by Sand. That's where Pora died. Like, imagine if the sky's on the site. But, like, I understand the whole idea of there's defenders in hooker, we can get around the orbital strike back site, we'll vipers his pit towards elbow, but the attackers don't push elbow and they still try and push Hiko. Uh, yeah. Hiko? I don't know what he, what's he doing. They still try and push hooker, even though they know that like there's a couple of plays in guild in there already. Listen, I was looking forward to uh, how BBL was going to perform without that race. And I think QT ended up with like 11 first kills, like something unseen uh, from a chamber. I think that he was performing very well. And it actually took guild a little bit, you know, more time, especially on the defense to catch up onto, onto that one. But it's kind of lackluster. I love the fact that uh, guild had a lot of set strats. Still, it's nothing 
it's not giving me the feeling of comfort that I've been getting from Guild lately. It's actually, as you said, Ryan, about the map picks that, uh, of the team that I'm not so sure about. Oh, it's yeah, just a, sway. It's just a yeah. sour taste in your mouth. That, like, it felt like BBL should have won that. Yeah. They 100% should have won that. It's the consistency factor of like, because we sort of said it in the pre-show, like BBL are known for these like Jekyll and Hyde rounds. Sometimes they look great, sometimes they make mistakes. And in the first half, that was all Guild. Guild were the ones yeah. that were making howlers. BBL were looking really like concrete. It's not only the fact that they have these awkward rounds, it's the 11th hour every single time. It's always just as we're looking at BBL to clinch out a map or a series, they crumble. So it, it's that consistency. It happened against Mech, it happened here. And, and Liquid. What, yeah, <laughs> I, it could very well happen on Ascent, our next map. Another thing that we talked about is how important QG was going to be with that clutch performances. And it was after he got uh, a 4K or an, or an ace on a round that, you know, the momentum trying to swap to BBL. And actually, when they started on, on their attack, it was looking pretty sharp. But it took a while for, for Gil to actually be like, why are we taking those duels? Like, we're losing them consistently. We need to play for the re for the retake. Oh, yeah, the, the fact that Safe and Leo Safe so many rounds for Gil. Like, you can tell that these guys have been playing together for like a very long time. I love to see Leo back on the, uh, back on the server. This is what we spoke about because BBR have such, I guess, a crumbling, even throwy kind of high uh, throwy potential. Mm -hmm. We saw that against Lippy, we saw that against Meg. You guys mentioned if they give Gil the chance, Leo and Safe are going to do that to them because they're the caliber of players that can. And Ryan, I know you wanted to break down uh, exactly what they did as well on yeah. your Telestrator. You mentioned Safe and Leo, like that main core of Guild, the two prime players that you build a team around. And really, it's a shame that we've not seen them at an international event yet. This is a really solid position, like BBL again in the lead. This was before like that momentum was taken away from them. And I want to really sort of pay attention to how these two are playing in a really inopportune situation. So we start off, the fact that Trex dies First, an orbital strike comes in onto the back of the site, and this execute comes in. And the thing that I really want to focus on, I wish I could make it bigger, but look at the positioning and movement that comes in from Leo on this KO. He's out in the open, he's just used his fragment and he's thrown it in showers to stop a push coming through in this direction. He's also used a flash, as we'll sort of see, just to give himself a bit more time. Here, he's sort of priming himself to get up in another position. Safe's also pushed a little bit further out when it comes to the smoke just at the top here. So he has a bit more sight to work with. I'll just reset it so we can clear some of the, the clutter on the minimap because the position that Leo's in, he was more focused towards like this direction, but because of the timing, he knows that somebody could actually come through Hookah, so he's backed up and he's got himself a nice little angle that catches QT as he comes through uh, the main doorway into showers. It's split up. Orbital Strike comes in from Cold Dementor, buys a bit more time. And just, again, if I fast forward it to when this Execute comes in onto the B site, Cold Dementor gets there a bit early, tries to stop it with a Judge, and this Viper's Pit was great. I think it's something that you said, Sue, as well, like the impact of the Viper's Pits that come in from safe absolutely trounced AIM DLLs in comparison. So it's not only the fact that this Viper's Pit comes in, but the movement and positioning, the timing, the everything that Leo and Safe do together, these are players that have played with each other almost two years, and you could just sort of tell the way that they're going for peaks, they're playing off of each other, the way that they're using the Viper's Pit, they absolutely crunch AIM DLL. For me, this is a team that is using the beneficial factors of two world-class players going in with like Safe and um, Leo that have played together for so long up against an, uh, a BBL team that is still trying to find that level of synergy and it's just a shame that that was the relying factor for Guild. Yeah, the one map away from securing that first spot and maybe, you know, having the, the, the highest likelihood of making it to an international event, but not just yet. To me, Leo was also a lot about what he was doing on the defense. I think that the zero points uh, uh, really created an effect on BBL. They had to stop, of course, after giving the information, but it was Guild not making the decision of actually giving them a free mistake that they could uh, capitalize on that actually gave the, the map on their favor. I mean, this is the thing, right? If the guild, uh, they had, once they adapted, they knew what they were doing. The synergy yep. just naturally helps them to carry them over the line. Yep. Honestly, as soon as we hit extra time, I don't know how you guys felt, but for me, it was there's no way guild is losing this from now. Yep. It was like Liquid Navi. It's after losing the round just, that we showed. It's yeah. like if you're BBL, you have to push it towards the end. Like Sluggy, I think, predicted 13-11. He wasn't too far off in the end, really. Yeah. He was close, um, but we're going to go to a quick break here. And when we come back, we're going to be taking you guys through Ascent. Who's next?
Look at my shine with the blow. This is my time with it though. This is my time to be way at the top. Me and my guys gon' pay out the block. Gotta look like boss. Time's right. And I know the sea is walking in the line light. Promise you gon' wanna watch like a sci-fi. My guys are high rises, high tide. My crown, if you come to my side, I pledge allegiance for lifetime. Dare to challenge yourself. <laughs> next welcome back everybody now the map vetoed in this match already off the uh, off the bat we were very very surprised about uh heading into ascend talk me through why you two were particularly surprised that we were able uh to see this map today I mean, it's it's surprising because we know the guild is not a very big big fan of this map, but maybe it's because of what happened uh, against Mech and the way that they were able to read them, that they were not so scared of going to Ascend. And I don't know, maybe BBL saw the possibility here. We've seen them in the past, even though the time that we've seen them on this stage was against Navi, and there wasn't much that they, much that they could do against them. I still think that there's potential. Yeah, I want to see that last in, in the series that BBL won against Navi, that was Ascent was still the map that they lost. On the side of Guild, permaban for Ascent for the most part, like I think four times total, which is more than any of the other maps. The only time that they didn't ban it out was against Mech. I said Liquid pre-show, but I meant Mech, uh, where they banned mm. Bind instead. But they then beat Mech on this map. So like they're beating teams on a map that they don't really want to play, which does bode well for Guild at this point, and less so for BBL, I think. I think it also has to do, I think we've talked about this a lot. They know that if the opponent team picks Ascent onto them, they can start on the defense. And that is going to give them the leverage to have like a, a calm first side and actually just, you know, work onto, uh, you know, their mental and actually, you know, making them calm down. I mean, we know how important side selection is in this current meta. It feels like the disparity is such a huge swing, right? Teams actually are able to start on defense, win out a ridiculous amount of, of rounds, Ryan, especially in comparison to the attack on maps like Ascent. I mean, they've got like 8-4, I think, against Mech as well, which sets them up nicely. But mm -hmm. like, it's also one of these areas where, like, I think Trex was also over back on the killjoy. So so it was the, the the fact that Guild could take it in various different directions. You could put safe on the Killjoy, put Trex on a jet, put him on something else if you want to spice it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. I think really the big narrative for Guild is if they do win this series 2-0, it's more like, okay, they're un uncomfortable maps. It's not their strongest, but they need to have a bit more of a concise map pool. Really, they should have lost Bind. We should be here talking about like BBL looking to close out this series. But I think Guild got gifted that series at the end. Now they're in a prime position to, to shut it up nicely get that first seed still it was it was guilt's pick a bind so even though the, it was it was extremely close i see a, a lot of potential for for ascend but guild ban and icebox they know that bbl is most likely to pick ascend onto them my big question is is safe going to stick on that jet are we going to see maybe chamber uh coming back and if they know that they're going to go to this to this ground are they going to bring maybe a completely different comp I mean, they left it open, so my assume, yeah. my assumption is that we're probably going to see something different because them leaving it open kind of tells me that they've got something uh, cooked up. Yeah. But where does this leave BBL? Like you said, Ryan, mm -hmm. they should have won uh, Bind in that break. If you guys saw on social media, a couple of players uh, have tweeted some of the other things that were going on. It just feels like mentally they don't seem to be in a position to be able to clutch out this series. I think in the server, Guild were grilling them quite nicely. And with that loss, I think, the community, the Turkish community, is probably grilling BBL a little bit as well, right? Because there's so much expectation on them just being the last like Turkish team that we still have in challenges. And them looking in playoff qualifying form, like it's yes. not been great, but it's been like, I could see BBL making it, especially with everybody else looking wonky. Be Like just the way that they bounce back against Navi and were able to take that series. It's not beyond me to see... Uh, BBL do the same here, especially with Fractures, the third map, but it's like realistically, it's up against Guild who are going to be like, well, that was a bit more stressful. Now we're on something that we beat Mech on recently, so we should be comfortable here. Yes. And BBL, it's a little more awkward, but still salvageable, I suppose. Yeah, and also another thing that I want to see on this map is Aslan. We saw him playing on that stage and maybe sometimes he was taking too much of risky duels, too much of, of dry picking and maybe being in the position that he was not supposed to be, but now he's going to be playing on the KO. He does have that flash, the zero point that he can play for the rest of the teammates, but he can also play for himself. If we add that on top of how cute he's performing on the chamber, I, I see a map three happening. I want to see a map three happening, but you know, some of the mistakes that they've been making every single week, it just feels like has not yet been ironed out. Uh, whereas for Guild, this is the kind of, I reckon, the first map that we have seen them make mm -hmm. some uncharacteristic mistakes, uh, which I'm sure they will have the ability to be able to iron that out before Ascent. 
Yeah, exactly. On Bind, there was a lot of lineups that were missed. I think it's also because we hadn't seen them in, a, in an official in a very long time. So they decide uh, to go in for something completely new. And of course, you still need those, those reps to feel comfortable. But on this map, again, Guild is going to be fixing those mistakes, the small ones that they had against Mech. And I expect that everything's ironed out for today. I, I think it balances on one round. Like, I think that's what it was on Bind, right? Like, yeah. Guild looked comfortable. And then we saw that KO execute shot where QT is just in the corner and he's bang, 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 like nobody checks him. And I think it's those kind of like utterly papige moments where guilds start panicking, like we can't let that happen again. And they were taking timeouts, like where are BBL playing? What are they doing? What are these guys up to? And they're getting flanked and stuff. So I think that for guild, it's more overthinking some of the problems. If they have a bad round, that tends to really start to compound and get worse and snowball. For BBL, I think it was just that, oh, we could win this kind of moment we're going to just try and speed up the tempo of the map, which a lot of teams naturally do because they want the series done and over. And I think Guild sort of will like run into us. We'll just take you down. I love how we're using Pepeige as an adjective. There's now. no other way to describe <laughs> no, it. No, I really like it. I really like it. And speaking of uh, Pepeige, uh, we're going to have to go to a longer break here due to some connectivity issues regarding Kushina on the side of BBL. Hopefully that's going to give us enough time to fix it. Go grab yourselves a drink and snack and we'll see you back here in just the moment. Who's next? I want it now and I ain't never gonna back down. I want it now and I ain't never gonna back down. I want it now and I ain't never gonna back down. I want it now, and I ain't never go back down. I am no regular citizen. No, do you understand what you're witnessing? You cannot tell what the difference is. I want it all, and I'm winning it. Yeah. I do not care about opinions. Uh. Time to make a few decisions. Do it. So I can take a position. I'ma go get it, I'm punching and kicking. Yeah. I keep on moving it out for me. Just do it and stop what I'm talking to. I'm not expressing no modesty. I can't see nobody stopping me. If there's a problem, I gotta solve it. Straight to the top, I can't see myself falling. I gotta grab it, there's no type of stalling. Number one turn it, don't have other options. Now I'm fired up. I'm sorry, brother, your time's up. I see the top and I climb up. I came from the asses, I rise up. Rise up, rise up.
gives you wings. Who's next? Welcome back, everybody. I hope you got a snack and drink like I asked you guys to and you're sitting at home comfortably. I have some good news and a little bit of bad news to deliver to you guys as well. The good news is uh, it looks like Kushner is able to play this game. His internet issue has been fixed. We're going to go into Agent Select any minute now. Uh, but potentially the bad news is if he is disconnected once again and we have to go to another tech pause, there is a chance that BBL will have to forfeit this map, therefore this series. But 2-2-2, two, 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 mashallah, let's hope uh, that is not going to happen. Kakuka and Ryan, it does feel like sometimes the Turkish teams get the brunt of this bad luck, but let's talk about Agent Select. Oh, uh, I am so scared because we were talking about how QT needs to perform, how he's potentially going on that chamber and how Aslan is going to potentially go on that KO, be making that two very potential good anchors for the map. Uh, on the other side, I mean, I expect to see the Omen versus Astra. I expect the BBL is going to keep playing the, the Astra on this map, at least. I don't expect many changes. It's still looking forward to what Safe is going to do, if it's going to be a jet or a chamber. Yeah, Cold Mentor on the Omen is a switch. Trex as well. Oh. Continuing here. The Cutie's going on the jet. Yeah, 208 ACF for Trex. But yeah, Cutie moving away from that chamber over to jet. I'm also looking at Aslan, right? Aslan versus Russ. 281 ACS that Aslan had in a 13-6 loss against Na'Vi. That's crazy yeah. stats when you lose that hard. So Aslan showing a bright spark on this map. Could be decider against Russ, who I think is still adjusted to playing this agent after being a, a Sky main for so long. Yeah, exactly. The potential is definitely there. It's going to be a mirror matchup at it, with the exception of the controller. As we said, Kulamento yeah. is going to be going on that Omen. And AMDLL is going to go on the Astra. Or off Sage I, as well. Like Killjoy, oh yeah. Killjoy is the meta right now. It's I, not I, Chamber anymore. Honestly. I quite like this for BBL. We talk about comfort picks and at least for you know Pora going back to his comfort mm -hmm. pick you already mentioned how great Aslan is on uh, that agent as well QT this this looks pretty promising uh, this is actually reminded me of what Pora was playing on SMB and he used to play the killjoy on this map and he would literally just just be the tip of the spare he, he didn't care that he was not on the duelist he would go in first and started diffing everybody I'm, I'm a little bit nervous for the second half because BBL have the worst defensive win rate out of anybody in their group guild of the highest attacking win rate out of anybody in their group. So it didn't really come to pass in bind, but Ascent with it being very vanilla and straightforward, yeah, Guild might be able to open up the map a bit more in the second half. It's definitely Guilds to lose here. And for them, if they win, they're going to get first seed of their group. But BBL, if they want to even make playoffs, they have to win this map. It's time for us to jump into Ascent with Pansy and Hypoc. Well... Let's uh, get ready for this, and fingers crossed we can actually get through this game. Um, Mike, there's a lot to be looked at here, but obviously we're, we're walking into Ascent. Where do you sit on this map now coming into play? Because I think this veto caught a little bit of attention at the start of the day. Um, where does this land for you? Uh, I, I mean, I, I remember alluding to a previous series with Guild where it felt as if they were wanting to explore uh, across their entire map pool, sure. right? Sure. And I feel like there, there, there's, there's an argument to be made here as well. I mean, uh, coming off, uh, we'll see, uh, what felt quite comfortable victory over Mech as, as well. But this is, for me, a, again, a weirder one for BBL in, in my mm. eyes. Obviously, we, we can only really go off the relevancy of, of kind of recent stats and whatnot. But sure. uh, this didn't look good versus Na'Vi, who themselves have had a very, very turbulent course throughout stage two so it is definitely yeah. one to, to look back on and i'm not entirely sure really how this one's going to go without without map one when uh, bind for me was an uphill struggle for guild for the entirety bbl today yes. have brought a completely different game plan and it seems to have really thrown a spanner in the works in terms of where guilds comfort and, and win conditions have lied which is within finding a very very good grasp on the macro right Let's dive on in, Let's get this one truly started, and hope the Kushner's internet holds up, as he will be at least leading the way for this one straight off the rip, and Gilbert can be slipping back to the deeper side of Boathouse, Trex can be back there, doesn't quite get as clean a shot as he'd like, but not overextending just yet to punish, they have already crossed through on CT, and well, Leo and Cordomet are going to keep their lives, and actually the spacing on this isn't ideal, they're going to be able to find a couple of fights on this, but luckily for BBL, 
unfortunately for them, they do get to clean up the back of Boathouse and at least facilitate the spike plant now. Spike I'm not entirely sure of the delay in, in terms of reinforcements coming back through from spawn there, but nonetheless, the paranoia will be vested here, I guess, to be the cornerstone of this retake, but no initial follow-up on it. So a couple of these angles going to present themselves. Ooh. Leo finds one, Aslan will respond. Great little angle from Aslan there, going to find safe. Last Time standing. looking good for BBL here. Leo not going to be able to convert much there. Lovely work from BBL once they got onto the site. Held the post plants well. And Aslan really finding a little bit of form there. Is there Leo desperately just trying to find one angle to present mm. itself, find a clean 1v1, but we'll play from BBL just to mitigate that risk in, in the end there. And uh, whether or not there was any pressure coming towards spawn there, I'm not entirely sure, but uh, like I said, I, I could see... At least one player, I think it was safe, actually exploring pretty deep towards market and towards bottom of mid just to make sure that there was no lurk. But maybe that was the reason for the delay in reinforcements. They're happy to just sure. give Trex and Russ up on backside. Hope for the best that they trade out equally as a bare minimum, but they lose out on that front. Let's look at what Guild's up to this round. Starting out with somewhat of a triple stack towards A, but no early contact and a slower round coming out from BBL here. Holding a substantially deeper default, maybe waiting for someone to go walkabouts over by B main, but no one's really willing to take them up on this as Gilda clearing through the map quite diligently, taking a fair amount of time. And again, the frenzies, the shorty in play, it's certainly feasible. And that little knife sent out, but all but a ruse has pulled the rotation off the back. Indeed, BBO will stack up here, strength in numbers. Of that phantom in the hands of Kushina. And they want to make sure they can police this weapon as best as possible if they do take any casualties. Again, though, they look to just force their way through market. You noted on the way in here, no contact given just yet from Guild. No, bear in mind the two players already slipped back towards side. Trex is a ooh, bit of a limited time span on how long he can stay there, but he does grab one. Wait, no one checked the back of Boathouse. Russo is still open to it in the swing. The timing's so good. Leo finding two here. Oh, the third. The frenzy is on fire. And AIMDLL's kicking himself. The timing on that crunch to pull the attention back was perfect. Just to isolate the fight towards Coldamenta, but time's the bigger factor for him. Ten seconds. He's got to get a wiggle on. And oh, the time is being played with here. Toying with their food. AIMDLL still dangerous, but the time has given them such an advantage. Good fight on the first. And now for Coldementer, just has to play his life. Would love to get the punish at the end. Maybe even get that little upgrade if he could. Not to be. But the round is theirs. And that is uh, a little frustrating, I'm sure, for BBL, to say the least. A beautiful work from Leo, though. And actually, safe coming through with the bait. Aslan just has too many mm -hmm. things to shoot at. The, the, the dash from safe onto site there but just makes Aslan second guess himself, sets Leo up for the second, and he's able to carry it through from there with just a frenzy, by the way. Trex with a great opener just to slow things down as well. At that point, the clock ticking away. And DLL just a little bit disconnected from the execution. So. He will be able to flip this back, tie things up one apiece. That's going to shatter the money that BBL could have been building throughout this. We know that they had a tricky first half on that first map, but were able to recover phenomenally. But now we look to see what they've got here. MDLL, that rifle has to reign supreme, has to do some damage. But on the other side, we already saw how keen they were to hit these rotations. So as soon as contact was made or any indication of contact, Leo was instantly over towards tree, but not to be the case. And it looks like BBL trying to maybe get a little bit of a grip on that, get a read on that. Once they actually disband on that short hit that they may be eyeing up for a second and start looking back towards middle. Turco will be noted here. Our drone coming through just to confirm that. Another one way on shore. They're still anticipating BBL leaving a couple of members trailing, but Spike actually making its way through market. Four strong... Once more, this B site going to come under pressure. Trex will find Oof. a couple of bodies on the other end of that. Or the chase. Coldamenta, Coldamenta. perfect backstab. That's punished right. by Turco. Okay, big timing for BBL to come back into this. That's a little bit of a swing in a moment for them now. Trex, it looks like a one and done spot, but the spacing gives him a second to readjust. Going to find two. Surprising, but keep in mind that AMDLL is still alive. And he has to clutch us up now in the 1v2. Spike planted. Russ is a little far away and Leo has to pause for a second. So what does MDLL do? The flash not quite. Resting the corner and MDLL going to get proactive. Not going to work out. 
the swap out to the knife there just means he hasn't got the weapon ready to punish yeah. Leo creeping down lane. A lot of damage done, though. Three will fall for Guild. I'm sure I've saved early progress yet, but I don't think the Blade Storm's available just yet. I know, a long way away. Wow, yeah. It's going to be a, a shaky purchase here. Coldamenta might even just settle for a judge. Oh, well. Uncharacteristic in a round like this. <laughs> but BBL back on the full buy now and very good ultimate progress here for a couple of members of BBL. Poor one off the mm -hmm. lockdown. Trek's actually mirroring that performance already. Let's see how they want to instigate this. I mean, as you, as you rightly said, they have plenty of opportunity now to get something going and it just looks... Like, Kushan's going to take the space. Altor being tampered with, and that's Aslan now online. Leo yeah, with a jump spot, but there's the pulp of the ult. Kushan's going to go in. Smokes go up. And you can see the hit just like, clearly being taken. This could be a full-on retake hit. No one messing around, no one lingering around too far. It's big though for Guild. Hunter's Fury, Paranoia, both flashes in hand for Russ as well. And actually, the lockdown popped the lockdown. in the post plant here. Look we'll oh, at destroyed. I'm not sure if attack came through as well into Kushina. I think it did. Looks like it. It looks like it just caught him on the way out towards Dice. And you're right, let's look at the utility that still remains. Turco now going to be slightly divided from the others. Going to invest the Owl Drone. Still think about the positioning. MDLL puts himself in the smoke. Beautiful work from MDLL. Denying two. And Cold Amenta just trying to buy time for the reload. Aslan's going to chase him down. And BBL holding this so far. Just Leo and Trek still standing. Trek does well to find Aslan. But it's time, and time has always been the factor to this. And they can do damage, but the time has started to dwindle. And Leo, great work, but I doubt Pora's going to give this one away. Absolutely not. Stand and face the music as BBL answer right back in. Yes, off the back of a couple of ults, but it's got them at least back on the board. I think the money's going to be uh, shaky for both sides here. Yeah, you can see a Spectre come through, but it's light armors across the board just to support some of that utility coming back online. Coldamenta will... Don the judge in this round and a couple of frenzies to flesh this out, but you can hear execution and one off the blade, so they have that to offset the economy in the next round Look if at this needed. Buy. Look at it. How does that make you feel? No, great, I'll be honest. Mm. I mean, it's good, it's still tied up here, so even if uh, Gil can still do some damage here, like I said, they want to force out a couple of the repurchases. On this round as best they can. Maybe even force out the Blade Storm nice and early in the next. Unfortunately, safe still lacking a little early progress towards his ultimate. It would be huge for Guild in a round like this. Oh, that, that could be a complete game changer, but a frenzy in the hands of safe and one to Russ as well. He's trying to hold that wider peak on it and safe trying to swing if he gets a chance and they're all here. Dinks, what he's going to get an overwhelm. Lovely work from BBL. Just brute force on approach, but diligence shown, and there should be a safe plant. And now dead. with the numbers, whether or not Guild are just going to commit to trying to find a couple of exits. BBL needs to make sure they're on damage control here. Hold on to as much of this as possible. Give themselves a little buff ass and nearly caught on the way out here. Turco finds it on the cross, though. Actually won't damage. even find the first. Cold Amenta now. Deep in the back lines with this judge. As soon as he shows his hands, I don't expect anybody else from BBL to entertain it. That's only the Spectre to give oh, it away. That's so upsetting. Calculated loss on the side of BBL. We should be able to get everybody else at safe distance here. Cold Amenta should just give himself up to the spike. And even want to hold on to this until... The next round, BBL put themselves one ahead now. Lovely. Cosmic Divide available, so they're able to actually cycle through a couple of these ultimates. Mm -hmm. Well, Turco's progress is there as well. Yeah, the Hunter's yep. Fury is available. So good counter towards Trex's lockdown. Russ, one off the null command, safe still a little bit lacking. 0-5 right now, going to throw the Operator in the mix. See if he can build up a little momentum here. Yeah, I want, to, I want to see safe activate a little bit here. I mean, the money's been a bit weird. Some of the site hits have worked out very nicely for BBL. They've constructed the way of one of them being a frenzy round where he's set up close, gets the dink and just dies. It's the way it goes. But Kushina just running it down, trying to take that space early on. 
Are we Russ having to respect this? And that's early intent shown towards A, or at least early presence, and they peel away from this for now, and they have to kind of re-clear a little. This shouldn't take too long. The safe having a slow start. I mean, he quietly had an MVP performance on map one. He was, what, yes. plus 15, plus 16 in terms of kill differential? And and the clutch huge, at the end. Huge, exactly. Coming up huge at a couple of the late rounds in particular. We're fully expecting him to come online. This could be the round to do it with the operator in hand. Look at this amount of presence. Turco is trying to sell them an absolute story. You are divided. And the divides come up, and this is when your heart's, you know, your stomach starts to sink a little bit. You know that something's gone terribly awry. And BBL are on the site, and they've got no one there to stop them. This is lovely work from them, and again, for safe, no chance to really do much damage anyway. Tucked up towards middle. I thought maybe if he had explored further, he could have caught them just this slowly is, walking in. This Wasn't is the a case. key engagement here, though. If Russ finds this kill, it's the Hunter Fury removed. He's actually going to find this. The lockdown, very effective in this scenario. And instantly, instantly invested. They've got to somehow get past this. Goldament has gone down. Leo's still on the defensive duties to take down AIMDLL. But again, while this stands, there are problems of plenty. And Russ is punishing as and tries to get out of there. And well, it's going to be on Pora with 12 HP towards the back of the site. And Leo's punished him. And you're absolutely right. The critical kill came from Russ taking down, who was it, Turco in that. And again, instantly changed the dynamic of the entire round. It does indeed, even the null command to, to comp complement that as well, even further, prevent any utility being used on site. Great round there, huge a solo flank from Russ, by the way. There was no support system in place for that. No, it, was, it felt like at the start that, you know, Safe was kind of sitting around that similar scene, maybe holding towards top mid, but there was zero uh, investment behind anything beyond that. It was purely Russ on walkabouts and could not have asked for a dreamier bit of timing and maybe just very cognizant of that back line that was waiting to be invested into, you know, really keeping control in case anything came down. So beautiful work, but we do dive back in. And BBL feeling a little bit of the pinch in the purse. Aslan just down to the Guardian. A little bit of light armor here and there, but it's nothing too worrying. Safe the timing here. Let's see how he gets on. This time exploring further towards Mill. Does have the support on short. Now that's smoked off. The recon bolt not tagging him here, so an opportunity to find one ahead of Kushina sticks out. Safe able to dash to safety. That's quite the tell. Absolutely, yeah. With where Kushin is shift walking towards, Guild should have a great read on this A hit. And you're on the money. Leo's already leaning over this way. You can see him poised, waiting for it. Russ is on duty, and you've got Coldamenta seeing slightly further tapped in towards Shaw. Now, Leo's only a trade out one for one, but it's poor to punish towards Russ. Wow. Leaving Coldamenta very much alone. And even with all that insight and knowledge of what was coming their way, they still fumble the bag. BBL are on the site. Now, Fonius go down. Now it will. The HP is low. Turco a little lower, or and as I'm both tagged up, but not an easy sight to be clearing. Work invested coming down from Coldamenta, and that just whizzed by. Safe gonna go for the rifle instead and hope for the best. Trex gonna play finding Aslan and Guild pull off the retake. It was systematic in the end. But BBL, man, I'm they're, they're looking dangerous. But a couple of things going right there for Guild. Is it BBL? kind of leaning back on their strengths from bind, right? Stacking up strength in numbers, and they're so good for some of these clearances onto site. Field almost caught sleeping in that regard. I mean, Leo yeah. does his best. I mean, Russ ultimately puts the knife towards short. There's no confirmed information behind that pick onto Kushner in mid. I think there may be a little anxious paranoia that there is a split coming through. Mm. Say so BBL stacked up as four. They're able to just death ball their way onto site. This round... And a little bit of a Shiko here. Kushin has to offset this a little bit with the Blade Storm. So you can get much done here. Kushin is straight through to market, Ooh. actually. And that could be a punish on the pinch, just because you can see that during that time, Safe was unable to back away. I'm pretty sure he got suppressed on that. But it was Leo to keep it safe. So Leo doing great work there. That one pick, stopping that momentum. Maybe that little bit of a spiral. But Bora getting a big shot. Trax is now gone. Still plenty of bodies here, though. And bear in mind, the Safe did fall away, but he still has that operator. Lovely work from the Aldron should clear him out, put him under pressure. Didn't actually tag him, so he gets to keep a little bit of secrecy to this, but he's going to dip towards theirs. So the site is BBLs, but look at the trade out of the spacing on this. Hunter <laughs> oh. Fury oh, comes dear. to an Ashley Aslan, backs into the fragment of Russ. Only one casualty here in the form of Trex. 
A little bit of a boom here. We'll see exactly how the economy sits for Guild after that. I mean, Trek's the only one really to be struggling down at 550. Mm. Well, they want to spread the wealth of Coldamenta here a little bit, actually. To enable a, a full purchase behind this round. BBL, on the other side of things, not an awful lot to work with after this. Lockdown available, Hunter's Fury available, Aslan 2 away from the No Command once again. The point where ultimately, I mean, this ultimate cycle becomes key in terms of how the rest of this half will play out. This is round nine, BBL looking for a little bit of a pace change. It's much quicker this time around with three it towards is. market. Yeah, and there, there was a little bit of commitment behind that too, and I'm wondering if they're going to double dip. Had to clear out the utility on the way, did at least note it's in place. And, and, and keep in mind, the safest thing deep towards CT with that operator still in practice, going to be able to catch the cross if they do commit in this fashion. Are they walking this back? Cold Dementor getting real close to the point of no return, and uh, I mean, trade facilitates a trade. It's not the end of everything, but now with the lockdown coming through, safe has to now look for other options to maybe catch this cross because his teammates are in trouble. And you're right, safe's gone down, Leo's gone down, and Trex can barely make it away. Ooh, just oh. missing the lineup there. Russ could have been rewarded. Another to deal with close by. Aslan actually Agreed. with the pre-fire. We'll find that now. Trek 61 HP. We'll swing out. Actually gets himself to a 1v2 scenario. Spike planted. Spike only just being planted now. He's got a little bit of time to work. He does. 61 Tom, HP is not much though. Tom is back in a second. How are you going to do this? Well, the problem being Trex is the one that was suffering in terms of the finances here. So... Well, he wants to hold on to that. I mean, if he dies, he gets the lockdown anyway. So, it was a calculated loss at that point. Both Ooh. stacked up towards stairs, though. It might allow him safe passage. If he finds a 1v1, he's read it. He really read it for a second there. I thought he had the beat on for, and he, he instantly adjusted to it. But it was a great post pawn. And actually, getting to the side from BBL was fantastic. Just somehow picking up that killer. And I think it was like Safe and Leo almost simultaneously just facilitated yeah. so much ability to get towards the site. Damage done as well at this point. It's only going to be two players that are able to carry some funds across here. Now the old command in play. Turco still sitting on that Hunter's Fury. Good counter towards the lockdown. Still one round separating them. So, yes, I mean, there's another round really to reset Guild's economy. BBL can come out with a clean victory here. Could be level pegging towards the end of this half, Lauren. It looks as if it was going to slip in Guild's favor, honestly. Yeah. No, 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 BBL have really started to dig their heels in. Fusion this time, Operator now out. Nice little trophy from some of the prior rounds now. Safe still back to it though as well. Maybe a different look to the battle for middle. I'm gonna reveal the position. The double stack on short yet to be noted and the first time we're really seeing this, at least this committed, this deep towards actual catwalk. So Kushner's got to be on red alert, just in case they get a little bit more exploratory. And Kushner, let's see how diligent you are at this. He seems aware of the possibility, but timing's everything, oh. and he misses it. <laughs> Call the mentor. Brilliant work from him. He's happy with that. That's Kushner now gone. <laughs> and the indicator, once again, should be blinking yeah. towards that A site. They might not even second guess the split this time around. Lockdown invested on the way in just to allow safe passage here. But on Fury versus the lockdown, that will be key in terms of this retake here for Guild. That's, I might even try and pop flash aim DLO into heaven here. If we could just get one and get out, this could be... Oh, I think aim DLO just caught the edge of that flash. Yeah, it was just on the edge. I feel as though he would have had that otherwise. You could see the potential to it, but there's the exchange of the ultimates coming through. Trex does find aim DLL. Pora trying to dip down towards hell, but he's gonna be overwhelmed. It's a one for one trade out. And now look at what remains, this Turco, and there's so many bodies in the way. Is there any heroics that he could pull? No, not this time. Trex is there and Guild pulling off the retake. As you said, this time, not second guessing if there's a further split to anything. They knew what the plan was coming out from BBL. And this time they put themselves in the right position for it. This is great. So they throw the lockdown basically to remove an extra body from BBL in that post-plant hold. They know that Turco is going to have to invest the Hunter's Fury. So not only do they have the man advantage from the first blood, they remove another player entirely from this post-plant hold. A guild, another fantastic re-clearance onto A-Site as well. Yes. 
The beautiful we've all seen, yeah, yeah, we've all seen how dangerous BBL are when they get their way, when they, they find that little bit of comfort towards it. Great in the post plant, already showing some real, real solid aspects to it. But this is a way different pace change. Rust going to take the fight and actually isolate the executioner. Went straight in for it and sadly copped all the damage. Now, bear in mind, look at the purchase, though. It was surrounding what Kushina was bringing in. It ain't much. Guardian, Spectres, and, oh, classics. And just like that, what looked like even playing field towards the end of this half, this is Guild potentially pushing towards 8-4. On the back of that one round. Taking that back. Russ taking a lot of damage, though, down to just 18 HP. Got to be careful for the remainder here with a Spectre and a Guardian in play. Oof. That's land. Well, actually, fine. Trex. I'm pretty sure that Russ was a shot so towards HP. market, actually. Yeah, that might be the green light. Coldman, it's not the first time he's been here. Now he should be overwhelmed. He has been. Leo trying to save the day. And once again, he feels like the backbone, Leo. Sometimes he can just be the safest pair of hands for this side who can actually keep these rounds from spiraling out of control. In the end, Turco does get caught by safe. But man, there was a window of opportunity there. Just the about trip. starting to creep open. But again, 7-4 to four now. Scoreline starting to lean a little heavier towards Guild, but BBL still close and they're still competitive in this. Absolutely. I mean, yeah, this is very polarizing finishes here. It's either 7 5 or 8 4. Mm. And really, with how this has gone, that would be a miracle for Guild to pull off the 8 4 with how yes. well I feel BBL have felt on the way in. Ultimately, put themselves back in a position to tie things up with a pistol round. And the round two in the second half. Mm. Turret going to take contact here for this paranoia. So, Guild looking to actually fight for A main. There's only two, though. Yep. This is going to be really interesting, actually. <laughs> Let's see how this goes down. See if the plan comes through for Guild. And they're so aware of what's going on. But the timing. Trex has to turn. Addresses Kushner and gets back to his duty. Called him now a little nervous, a little worried, and just puts up the smoke. Right choice. Spams it out, keeps his life for now, but the damage is getting done. Look at the chip damage on him. He's down to 15 HP, but he does get to keep his life. Luckily for them as well, keep in mind, Leo lent over. Get himself right into the thick of things too. Made sure he was ever present. And now what do we have coming through? Lockdown coming out. Divide coming through, and they have to try and re-engage towards the safe site. Not an easy task now. On the trades. Guild. Axe to the wall, but still just fine. Goldamenta able to do the damage on such dire HP, but his aim DLL 1v3 not going to be allowed to Beautiful go down. Beautiful hold. Really nice from Guild. They find the first kill there, and it, it, it all but mitigates that cosmic divide being invested. The reactionary lockdown comes through. Russ has the null command to swing through and make sure that they can dig their heels in and hold on to A site. I mean, that's a tough end for this half for BBL, but oh, what a step up from Guild. I, I, look, to flip that uh, back to an 8-4, like, you look bigger yeah. picture for that half. That is huge from Guild. Well, because it initially started out looking quite nice for Guild. I was like, okay, we, we've got a good game here. Cool, no worries. You know, pistol looking good, da 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 but the way BBL just answered back as soon as, you know, they had a little bit of, you know, a bit of a purchase behind them, it was actually pretty decent. Like, BBL looked good in a lot of these rounds. And I hope this doesn't... I mean, I feel like this is going to be the case if it does close out in this fashion that, again, BBL close, but not quite converting, right? Like, that's that's the heartbreaking thing. But we are into the second half. Guild starting out this time on the attacking side and BBL looking like they're pulling a triddle mic. It's looking that way. Well, they're yeah. going to be set up here with a... Flash from Aslan. Not even that. Just dry swinging through this smoke. Nobody on the other side of it. BBL now look as if they want to gamble stack towards A. And gamble bad. <laughs> if the spike carries on the way it was kind of leaning. See if anything's going to sell them on it, right? There's still two players over towards this. You've got Safe here and Cordamenta. Oh, all BBL have really. Uh, Tommy's on an island. Uh, that's all they have towards B site. There's three we'll members. Of the holiday. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Spike not committed just yet. Guild conscious of any further aggression here after a mid piece. The dart actually comes all the way from B main. The guild investing behind this safe might even just I was say, might gone. put his life on the line. But ho, ho, ho. you needed one of those for a. Need a couple left. more of those if he wants to dig yeah. back in. 
Because now you look at the, the next layer to this, it gets harder to clear. But look at the wrap coming out as well. Kushina doing nice work here, but Leo going to put his life on the line. Almost just holding the line as well. Overwhelmed timing. Does he get away? He how? has to keep his life. How? I have no idea. 10 HP. Ugh, I don't know how he's standing in this. His teammates are falling like flies, but it finally goes down. And BBL work it back in. Brilliant from them. Well, they sold the fake. They just needed to find yes. that one. Pora with a crucial kill. A crispy one at that. To stop things on the way into B site. I'm not even sure, actually. Was, did they shoot the turret or did Pora recall it? It was almost like a little bit of a bait to pull him into that sure. angle. Did happen off screen, so I'm not entirely sure. But mm. BBL, another second half pistol round posted. That's a mouthful. Say it again. I dare you. Maybe later. We'll wait until the wait until the second series. <laughs> All right. Um, the frenzies are back out for Guild, though. I really like frenzies. They did, they I, did... I used to like CZs, man. Like I, I, I'm a sucker for anything that's just kind of spammy. Yeah, Tech Nine loved yeah, a bit of it. Yeah. Who needs finesse? Oof. I like the idea of it, but in reality, run and shoot them. Let's see how it goes, though, because really, it's not gone well. Um, one enemy remaining. You've upset me today, uh, BBL. You've taken away my frenzy. The well, frenzies don't look that good, do they? Shut up. Shut up, Mike. Kyushu's just 1v3 frenzies. That's crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. Eight to six. I mean, BBL doing as is required, right? You want a close game? That's how you started out. Close that gap on the scoreboard. And hey, they've been doing quite nicely in bonuses too. So this round could be pretty essential. If they can do some big damage or... You know, let's let's push it out there, even convert it. Could be something to watch. Why are you, why are you showing this again? You give us like no replays, but you want to show that. Well, didn't Guild the flip? Didn't frenzies. Didn't win. Guild flip round two in the first half, right? Yeah. Comes to this actually, yeah, you're right. This is well. Um, struggling to remember how binds bonuses went. Actually, I think second half BBL converted round three and four. I believe they converted at least at least yeah. one of the bonuses because that's about all my brain can remember from the tech timeouts. This one here with the Phantom in is definitely a good shot. I mean, Kushner even possibility of an overheat. The Blade Storm one away. That's not going to cancel out that drone from Leo. Again, Spike making his way towards A and a very deep hold here with... You can see where Look Porus... That utility. Uh, he's got the meat blender set up for the door. Anybody who tries to close that door is as good as dead. It's... Back Door's to the... Stuck the, right the, now. The cringe joy setups. That, that's straight out of TikTok, that one. You literally... The, only... the alarm bot takes contact. Yeah. You pop both nano swarms. You can't even jump behind Jen. Like, you, you're literally stuck out in the open. Okay, let's let's see how the blender looks. Ooh, oh, panic, they didn't close the door. Panic. They didn't close the door. Okay, look. The blender might need some new blades at this point. It's done the best it can. And as did Kushner, but gets overwhelmed. Now, looking at what remains, you've got Spectres. So expect them to get a little bit uh, up close and personal if they can. I think the main point is if they can. For now, Gilda just happy to tuck in, happy to turtle up. Don't need to take too much contact on this. The smoke can be... Will the smoke cover the turret? Actually, it'll be interesting That's if they're trying I'm... to flash off contact Let's towards see. heaven or something. Well, it's gone poorly to begin with. MDLL spammed out. Yeah, this this is yeah. good positioning from Guild. Sadly, unable to find much here. BBL comfort for Guild. Yeah, that that is rough as well because those sorts of setups with Killjoy. It's in this round where you've only got a Spectre, you want to make sure you can get a freebie off off, off a little setup like that. So unfortunate that's dismantled. Mm. Be crazy actually there's no swing i'm not sure was that kushner in heaven with the phantom well there's, I, I, if there's an extra body there he can maybe swing and and make sure that somebody's forced into that corner they almost come out as soon as the alarm bot actually goes off he can just stand for free in the open there's no pressure towards mm. him no yeah. do you do you still go to tiktok for your uh, cringe joy setups or of course of course the chamber, the chamber cringe isn't isn't as high, so it's not hitting. It's not hitting the same. No, it's not hitting the same. Uh, nine six. See what the intent is this time. Seen a couple of different looks now out from Guild. Smoke coming in towards Cat, but other than that, relatively quiet start about the minute mark. 
Big buffer, though, to convert that round with all five standing. You can see what it's done to the economy here. It actually puts Guild back in the driving seat. But everybody above 1,800 here. Ultimate progress lacking a little bit. No orb control here early on, so... Revealing area. Probably a round or two ahead of this first full ultimate cycle, but... Could argue BBL probably... Holding the lead in that regard. Guild now stacking up, actually. Mm. Curious to know where that fragment lands, actually. That towards, towards market, maybe? I'm not sure. No idea. Uh, flash through the smoke and away we go. Turco waiting and... Yeah. <laughs> Easy. Easy work on Russ, who looked just straight up AFK. BBL, fully aware of the plan. You could see the fact-finding missions going on towards that A site as well in the meantime, which just allowed for this... Deeper hold, and Leo's found aim DLL. 13 seconds, it shouldn't be a problem. And Leo left in the 1v2, a 1v1 on the site. Seven seconds, he's got to make this kill happen now. He's got it. He's got to plant, Mike. Uh, 10 seconds should... for the recon as well. This, this shouldn't have happened. By no means, this should have happened. Five bullets, he's hit that reload pretty quick. And Pora. you got to shoot this recon, Pora. It will save your life. Actually, not going to be invested here for the wall bank. Okay, there it is. Recon goes in. It's for sight though. He's going to know. Leo yeah. knows he's got a bit of space to work with. Okay, or going to start working forward and now. Oh, oh, horror! You needed that one and you got it. Leo's starting to heat up though. That got dangerous out of nowhere. I felt there was no right that Leo should have had that much impact, but thank the stars that Pora was on playing that back in. Absolutely, had a slow map one indeed. Not necessarily numerically shining here in map two, but mm -mm. coming up huge there. Look at Leo though. Speaking of numerically shining, yeah. Mike. 22 to 9. Definitely having a game here on map two. Look at that. Actually, kind of evens things up in terms of the ultimates. Trex now with mm. the lockdown, the Hunter's Fury for Leo. Kushin is still on that Blade Storm, which will be invested here. They have to spread the wealth a little bit because. I mean, look at this purchase. Uh, I talked about previously with it being a flawless round victory for Guild. It was huge in terms of the economy. They had a full purchase behind that previous round. Now BBL are suffering. It's two rifles. They certainly are. That's what, Aslan and Pora. So those are your two key players split to either site right now. No way, that's And Kushina. I was going to say. That's such a dangerous game. Okay, the exchange of lockdowns as well, Mike. Yeah, Leo will cancel one out. One that gets any further damage there, but Guild will be allowed onto site. Look at them all stuck towards CT as yeah. well. This is a free plant. So much utility being dumped towards yep. spawn here. And remember, this buy is not great from BBL, so this would be a huge, huge round for them to have impact on. Aslan and Pora with those two rifles still to hand. Pora the one kind of taking the fight, and you can see Russ waiting patiently. Kushina's found safe in the oh, meantime. Oh, dearie me. It's all starting to fall like a house of cards. Kushina dives in. Punishing Trex and Guilds. And this might be a task too far even for Leo. And I think he knows it. Can't deny the defuse and has to sit back and watch as this round defined by Kushina. What a way to find the impact in the end. Leo going to at least take down Pora with him. And at this point, though, they've got four rifles being taken through. BBL will be grinning about that round. A massive upgrade. I mean, what it was? It was two rifles and the blade storm, if I'm not mistaken. I think maybe a spectre in the mix as well. But yeah, there was a spectre, but that's about it. BBL looking fantastic for the retake. Now, actually, Guild's economy going to suffer on the back of that. Still have decent ultimate progress, safe one off the blade storm, rust one away from the no command, but that takes a big chunk out of the finances for Guild. They had a massive inventory advantage in that. Mm. Okay. Still, BBL still keeping it close. I mean, I, yeah, they for are. me, this, uh, I hate to say, it, I came into this thinking Guild look better every time we see them. And this, for yeah. me, for BBL, we haven't seen an awful lot of depth to them. They've struggled. That it's, it's been a very turbulent run this time around. But mm -hmm. like I said, now that the pressure's on, they're delivering today. Yeah, and I think that's the key thing, because as I said, if you'd watched their games coming up until this point, I mean, we, we go off of what we see, right? You can't just make it up over your feelings towards a team, if you like them or not. 
you see their results to this point, you've seen how they played, and you're like, oh, it's not it's not quite convincing you. You've seen a couple of, you know, looks that maybe brought you back on board to thinking, okay, it could be there. Again, that whole, like, close but no cigar sort of deal with BBL. But here, there's, there's a scrappiness to them. There's that do or die mentality, which is actually relatively true for this, that they do need this to work. Now, for Guild on the other side, a, a bit of a weird purchase for them. Far from the dream. They all popped for safe. Give them something to work with in this round. <laughs> the Phantom changing hands a few times there. We're back with Leo now. Trex, we'll actually find the alarm bot in mid, so whether or not that's going to pull a rotation or force BBL to hedge their bets a little bit. Now, this one burns out very early as well. Still 60 mm. seconds to work with here for Guild. And they're kind of probing all across the map here. And obviously, they don't know, but the chip damage on Pora is unreal. 10 HP. And they're trying to pull that attention. They need some success on the way in, though. TP towards the back does get a little bit of a glimpse. But it pulls them away from Market, Lauren. That's the key You're thing. Right. On the money now, look at the state of this. How do they get any sort of hold on this one? Because Gilder at the door. They're just trying to go in for the trades. They need a trade on this. Trex is there. Takes down Kushina and Turco on the back of the side. Still going to hold strong. Two more could be a problem, but they've got control back towards stairs. The crossfire could have been good, but Sage says no. Turco's out, and actually the smoke denies the vision. Cold Amenta, good position to catch across. Spots one. And Ooh. misses the shot that he needed there. And it's all down to man himself. Big man Leo needs a big round. And they're both towards stairs. He's got to know this. He's got another. And Leo couldn't clutch out before, but maybe he can. This time, tries to get away. Readjust. Fall away. And he just falls. BBL closing the scoreline now at 9-9. to nine. Leo nearly delivering another. Bloody Almost hell. second guessing himself with the, with the jump back to... The boat house, I wish he honestly. committed, yeah. Yeah. Stick to it. I mean, he finds the squishier target, which is Pora. He finds aim DLL first there. Pora's in a really, really tricky situation. Coldermenta, unfortunately, I mean, he's desperate to try and prevent a couple of BBL players swinging onto site when the plant's still coming through. You see here, 49 HP oh. just tries to get out of dodge. And aim DLL catches him. That's three rounds unanswered now. Three retakes as well mm -hmm. for BBL. They've been down to the wire, some of these. This is so exciting. Kushina has to respect the utility early on for the way, because this looks pasty, but the blender... Uh, oh, rush shit. Oh. Just to be not, rest. Not pretty. But you're right. But Kushina's positioning really nice. Falls away from the initial angle, but the double dip on it. Maybe a little too brazen as Leo's going to punish him as Guild's still going to try and power through on this one. They've got the control they need. The res looking near on impossible. But Bora, the shot is stunning. Leo's gone down. And a 1v2 for himself. Last player standing. And he's found one back sight. Cold Amenta caught in no man's land. He's, even, he's noted where safe is. This is huge from Pora. He is playing this perfectly, but only four bullets in the mag to play with. He's trying to bait the sound of the drop. Safe didn't quite fall for it on the first try. Now a tap on the spike. He spotted the player out to the classic. It's all he's got left. And Safe tries to close it. <laughs> he does. Classic. So, v classic. Man. So hey, you want to play that game? Let's go. That's fine. <laughs> man, that was almost a beautiful clutch. I've got to say it from Pora. Man, that could have been gorgeous. Uh, Pora's looking so much sharper than map one. Yeah. I say he was in a weird position in map one where he was forced to be the one to constantly flank, mm -hmm. address the back lines of guild. But here he's, he's looking really good in a couple of scenarios. Still one round separates them. God, there's Again. been so many almost clutches. Like this, this game is literally the what could have been, right? You had that crazy poor clutch, the almost clutch from Leo twice now. Damn. And now the money's probably... I mean, it's, it's crazy, though, that that's what's separating these two teams. That's Absolutely. what I'm kind of taken aback by. Because that's not really what Guild have had to rely on previously. Mm -hmm. It's BBL forcing us out of them. Saves 5 HP. How's that happen? <laughs> Oof. I mean, is that just a straight-up Sheriff headshot at distance? I'm, it had to it been, looked right? like it was like open line of sight, so I'm not sure if that was two wall bangs that just so happened to be 145 damage, but... <laughs> That's going to take a bit of the bite out of the execution here if Guild decide to force their way onto A site. I mean, safe's not going to be the, the front runner here, that's for sure. Mm -mm. 
No way you want to be dashing into a smoke with 5 HP. And, old oh, Russ. Trying to trying to give him a, a little bit of a, a look towards A, but I, I quite like what Kushin is up to, just trying to walk mid. Get proactive. I mean, he's the one with the rifle, right? So if you're going to try and do anything, he's the man you want to do it. He's actually double dipping on this and still takes down Cold Event to save good for it, even on that 5 HP that he had at the start on the crunch towards A. But there's still two players here, top towards the door. But we know that it is Sheriff's. And the attention goes towards Rust, but Rust loses. And that's huge. Look at the crossfire they can set up now. If Aslan can play his life, this is massive. Oh, baby L, a large and in charge. Leo is still doing what he can, though. If there's only one man standing, you would want it to be Leo right now, but he needs this more than ever as Pora on the other side. Still going to be a problem. Spots out aim DLL. Expects the swing from heaven, but it's not there just yet. Fuck's behind the generator two towards heaven. Can he find these individually? Surely not. Spots one takes it. Leo now giving another no chance. Way. He takes it. Stop giving Leo chances. He doesn't need the help of the two clutch players. Now fighting oh my God, Leo. Leo this time. No Unbelievable way. work from Leo. How many times do we ask him to deliver like this? And how many times does he keep doing it? So close a couple of moments ago. And this time gets across the line. And it comes down to the two clutch masters here. Yep. But he isolates this so perfectly to aim DLO. You can see Turco and Pora just desperately trying to figure out where Leo's repositioned to. So Ooh. well played from Leo. 30 and 11 right now. He's already dropped the 30 bomb. We're in round 21, Lauren. That's unreasonable. It's a, it's absolutely unreasonable. And and you've got to almost feel for people in that, in that sense because it's like we're doing so, so well in some of these rounds and then suddenly Leo's getting three kills, four kills. He's clutching up and the ult's coming out now. Colomance has found MDLL and oh, Leo's just pumping damage. Takes down Aslan. Fusion are trying to maybe find a little bit of timing. Not going to get it. Doors shut. Open again, but does need to back away now. Four and out. Actually, lockdown in hand. Going to find a headshot on to safe initially. Down to 10 HP, though. <sighs> got to wrap this one up now. You've got to consider the save, and they absolutely will do. Kushner does have the Blade Storm. Possibility offset now, but Guild just building upon that success. They dial mm -hmm. up the pressure. A pace change here, and it's a site on a platter for them. <sighs> Uh, and I'm honestly starting to worry about BBL. This is getting right down to the wire, and you feel like, is there another one of those rounds in the bag for Leo, right? Is there another moment like that? Sure, maybe in the next, you know, if we go the distance, same can be said for a couple of the other players, but, you know, I need to see more from BBL as a collective, right? They've been put in an undesirable situation. We understand that. But, man, I want to see more from these two. Don't want the game to be over yet. 12 to 9, and it's not yet. The two rifles get saved. But I'm not sure what the buy is going to look like say, now. The, the purchase is going to be flaky, I'm pretty Match sure. Point. You're going to be struggling to get some rifles on the board here. AMDL has got the Cosmic Divide to work with. Lockdown, we've already noted. Blade Storm in hand for Kushina. Mm. You can see what they're left with. They're scraping pennies to get a bottom of the barrel. This is a tough round. and uh, I'm with you. BBL have done so much right. Yeah. Throughout the series, not just this map, throughout the series. For it to come down to this, and <laughs> I love that as well. They come through that clutch on A side from Leo, and it's like, right, guys, let's hit A again within the first 10 seconds. Yep. Yeah, it's it's been... Just it, turning it up say, the heat. Good calls as well coming out from Guild. They quite like some of the adjustments now, because I was getting a bit worried. They looked like they'd been well, uh, that, hitting a bit of a, a wall at one point. For sure. That that round actually is almost like a Cold Amentor's, you know, got out of his head a little bit. There, there's yeah. been a few rounds where we've been thinking, yeah, Guild have overcooked this. You can see what yes. the intention is, but that's one where it's almost like the confidence call. It's like, stack up, we're hitting A, let's go. Okay. On the other side, it's do or die time for BBL. All comes down to this, pretty much. Three on the trot as well for Guild. Answering back, because BBL made mm -hmm. this sale. I mean, look at that timeline. BBL yep. made this second half interesting. Just, uh, I mean, down. maybe an element of running out of steam here for BBL. Guild winning out in terms of the well, mental the game here, and it's going to be a fake onto a site. But look how successful it's going to be as well. That's it's the scary factor. Already baited out the lockdown. Poor is... safe is no idea. Poor is it. What? Okay, they've pulled three players. They're going to at least hear the steps of that. But by now, you can see it. We can see it. They're on the site. Cold Mentor. 
What do you do with this one? Well, not much. MDLL's got you. you this time run. around, Rusk's gonna try and watch the push back in. This is now looking weird because there's almost too much success towards A that you've had there. We're safe finding so much room. The rotations are coming out, and bear in mind that Pora <laughs> is still waiting. I'm just. I just so said it. This, this is like Guild of Overcooked it again. Yup. <laughs> safe is so deep, he's like, guys, there's, there's actually nobody here. They've detained one on B from the lockdown, but uh, poor is going to be unnoted here. Luckily, is the problem. luckily, everyone's making their way through A main. He's going to oh. be noted here with the knife, though. That's it. That's going to have to force him away. And you can already see over by tree. Safe's looking this way, and they're going to be very diligent on the cross because that's where he was. A quick adjustment up cat. He's going to try and find the fight towards top mid. Which, he's won. Massive. Leo's gone down. The raid boss is defeated. Safe's gone down as well. There's still hope here for BBL. Two more players to find. Russ and Trex. Spike is down and the divide's there. Trex! Oh, no! Still good for two. Russ on the site. He's... Oh! Turco keeps him in this. And my god, I thought... Okay. The, 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 the emotional roller coaster of this round. Taking that A site completely for free almost. Four are going unnoted. Then the, then the reveal coming in by the knife. It, we're, we're at 12 to 10. What the hell was that? I mean, I spoke too soon. I was talking about Guild having a little bit of confidence back in the mid-rounding, but... <sighs> That's a tough one to sit back and watch. Luckily, they got the benefit of a little financial buffer here, but... I mean, they lose this. BBL on 11th. We're, we're staring down overtime once again. This is... This is madness. 12 to 10. Let's go for it. Ult coming through for safe. We have the frenzy for backup. And this time you can see the commitment of utility coming out from Poro over towards that A site. Tucked all of it into this. Fusion is suppressed and has to respect it. Falls away towards... I went deeper towards top mid, almost on that A lean as well. I'm going to pave the way for safe here to try and find something with this blade storm. Parrot will spot it out though. Couple more bits of utility here. Kushner well, actually happy committed. to come through, but Poor's already found safe, so this is good. Gonna slow things down. How much do they explore by tree? That's the only question for me. Is how much room do they try and take here? Or noted this time playing towards I mean, site. I don't know by what degree, but for the love of God, BBL, don't explore tree. <laughs> the yeah. line I'm actually gonna come through. Poor gets blinded. The, the what is that goes. nano swarm? That combo is sickening! And Russ has punished MDLL. Do they know about Kushina? They do now. He reveals it. He shows his hand. He finds one. Oh, couldn't work it out on the second few. And now the 2v2. Turco and Aslan up against Codimenter and Russ. Spike to be planted. And Codimenter needs to be near enough by to try and bail him out. It doesn't need the help. Russ is good for it. And now it's all on Turco. A 1v2 to seal the deal. 8 HP is all that's left in Codimenter to get across the line. Mike, it's a 13-10, it's a 2-0, but this game was so close. I mean, it almost doesn't do it justice. Uh, yeah. I would have loved to have seen that one go to overtime as well. Questioning whether or not BBL would run out of steam and absolutely showing that they're willing to fight until the final round. What a performance from Leo, though. I yeah, mean, Leo what was that unreal. from him? You don't normally get those. Like, Leo's good, right? I think we, when we talk about Leo, always the safe pair of hands. You know what you're going to get with Leo, but there's always that pop-off potential, and, well, we've seen it in droves today a little bit um bitter to, to look at it on the bbl perspective but for now we ask you to let us know your player of the match get down below and and vote for us i i've got to say leo for me mike you in agreement yeah it, it's got to be her. i mean if cool. anybody watching that series has got to say the same thing absolutely well we're not going to take any more time from you because i know a lot of you are looking forward to that fanatic game that's coming up not too far away now and also there's a lot to be said about this game so we're going to leave it over to the desk after the break with that win on Ascent Guild, they've locked themselves in as the first seed out of Group B. I'm back here with Kakuka and Ryan. I didn't expect that map to be as close as it was either, uh, especially after the first one. Did you guys expect that? I mean, I kind of expected a good performance coming out of Guild on the defense. It was on the attack that I was not very surprised by what I saw. But still, it's a win for them. They locked themselves up as, as the first seed. And we have to say goodbye to the chances of BBL to making it to playoffs. Yeah, it was a, a series with a lot of possibilities. And I think a lot of people would assume that this would be a 2-0 to Guild. But looking at it now... 
Guild are in a great spot, don't get me wrong. Like one best of three win to get them to Copenhagen now with that top seed. But this was all but convincing from me. Like BBL mm. could have easily won by this map. We saw at least a bit more promise out of Kushina. He didn't DC, which is also a great thing, <laughs> all things considered. Um, but Guild, even with like Leo having 31 kills, it just yeah. makes me think that if they play up against a Fnatic and FPX, I think they're sort of on par with Ascend at the moment at Guild. I think Group B with Liquid and with Mech look a little bit very different to Group A. That's yeah, I don't know how much they, they um, decided to dive into this encounter per se, because many of the things that I saw in the attack were not prepared, were not ready to go. Um, to me, Leo was the only one that was 100%. There was a lot of mistakes coming in from both of the teams, especially on the side of BBL. The, the, the point where Guild started to punish all of them on the attack is when they started getting those rounds. Like BBL were performing retakes going one by one, especially uh, on that round that we saw. Uh, who was it? Leo having that 1v3 yeah. after the spat goes down. All the recons that haven't been, that haven't been destroyed. Leo ended up, I don't know how many assists? Uh, 11 assists and 31 uh, kills. Let me tell you, it would have been 31 assists if he didn't get that many kills. Yeah, uh, that, that, that's my point here. You know, Leo, I'm not going to take anything away from him. He was fantastic. I want to see this guy at an international tournament really badly. It was safe. Safe for yeah, trade. Yeah, yeah. I, I believe he can replicate a performance like, performance like this, but how it wasn't that hard for him was it because nobody destroyed his recon dar he pretty much had the infinite amount of warbank every single time that recon was up and when those kind of mistakes you know and those in those situations they have to be communicating with each other someone has to be destroying that recon yeah. dar i will say for leo one thing that's always been consistent that's thrown teams off is the timing of those recon darts he's very good at yeah. throwing out a dart at the worst possible time for bbl whilst they're going in for an execute i think enzo said it about about fade as well, like timing the utility as soon as the enemy team's about to do something, because it's like, run onto a site, oh no, I need to clear it, but I also need to like clear these angles as well. The whole point of Leo is able to get the timings on them. The BBL are like, we need to clear these angles, just ignore the recon. <laughs> well, we're all being paid. It's a bait. It's we're a all being yeah, yeah. No, but it, it's also very complicated. When when Guild was, for example, on the defense, there was this round that saved the sites to go on the aggression um, and actually go across mid and actually take an, take an off angle. And the moment where he gets the kill, half a second after, a smoke appears on top mid coming in from Coldamenta. You know, the, 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 the thing is that for Guild, everything scatters up. So it makes sense. Uh, on the attack, again, is where I'm not convinced. So I don't know how this team is going to perform performing playoffs. They have that first seed, they only need one win, but uh, we'll we, see. We always knew that this series was going to be an awkward one. So, you know, credit mm. for Guild to get over the line in 2-0 fashion, but when you sort of get into the nitty gritty, you start to worry. Yeah, hopefully we don't have to worry too much. And the man that's going to give us some answers here is Safe from Guild. Hi, Safe. Welcome back to the show. Congratulations on taking the first seed. You guys weren't able to do that last time you played VCT to come out with this many wins. So it must be really nice for you uh, to be able to improve this much this time around. Uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, we've been putting in the hours. We've been doing a lot of work uh, behind the scenes, even though this game didn't reflect that work. But I, I strongly believe that we've we've built up a good a good basics for this team and and we're showing that in other games at least this one was kind of off talk me through what was off about this one because from our perspective it also looked a little bit off what were your kind of opinions now uh, the game is over on what could have been better i mean obviously we kind of felt a little stale on ascent there was a lot of um I would say something about confidence and not actually starting to play the game. We, we kind of sat in positions where we just didn't feel like we have to react to what they're doing and we just kind of got stuck really. And that's that's very bad for if you're playing a team like BBL who moves around a lot and keeps rotating around and you're not adapting, then you're not doing it properly, you know? And if you get stuck in that mindset, just get a tunnel vision into it. It's hard to get out as well unless you crack it open somehow, but we pulled through. Of course, we wouldn't normally see you play Ascent. We wouldn't normally see you play Bind either, but the map vetoes were a little bit crazy today. Is that what you guys expected? And what was the reasoning behind playing these two maps today? Uh, yeah, we expected something of the sorts. Uh, reasoning really is that we feel confident on both maps and we thought we had uh, done the work on them. I mean, Bind and Ascent, purely. It, Today did not reflect how good we are on those maps. That's all I can say.
Yeah, I mean, at this point, I feel like every team have all of the maps down, right? So uh, we've guys, we've seen you guys uh, do super well on the other maps already, but one agent that eludes you guys, and also BBL, and a couple of the other teams in this competition right now is Fade. Why are you guys not playing Fade? Um, well, I mean, I never said we're not. <laughs> Why haven't we That's seen you play thing. Fade? Well, we haven't played Fade yet because it's just not what we want to do for the matchups we're up against. I mean, we can play everything, to be fair. I mean, you know, as a, as a pro team, any pro team in this league could probably just switch up comp, pull in a Fade, do something different. But it really, really depends on what your plan is. It has to, it has to make sense. Mm, okay. But for us right now, it doesn't. I can't wait to see you uh, back here on the Phoenix safe. As you said, you guys can play anything. I want that by the end of the season, please. Uh, thank you so much for joining us and we'll see you back here next week. Thank you. Bye. Well, it felt off for them as well. It wasn't just from our perspective, but it's a good thing that at least on their off days, they can still pull out wins on maps that we haven't really seen them play. Yeah, exactly. I love the fact that he acknowledges it as, as well because this is not the guild that we've been seeing. This is not the guild, definitely, that we saw bidding you, Liquid. There's like five or six teams that we said that about, though, to be fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but this one's acknowledged that they were like, yeah, this is, this is not the level that we want to provide. Top seed. I do not know if the fade is a bait or not. Well, all I got to say is that the player probably that would play Fade uh, would be Leo. And through thick and thin, high and lows, Leo has always been kind of the most consistent, the beacon of light. And again, it's way overdue that we haven't seen him at an international yeah, tournament. I was going to say, if, he, if Leo picks up the Fade and does well, he's the best initiator in the world. Yes. By a, by a yeah. strong margin. So yeah, one best of three win away from Copenhagen, seeing him on that stage up against some of the best teams in the world. You'd w almost want to see it, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you, you... Not be biased, but yeah, you'd want to <laughs> Give me Trent versus Leo right now. I want to see that. It's so similar, like, just the stories, <laughs> yeah. right? Because Leo is still such a young prodigy player that, yeah, he, he's got a long... He's going to be great in the future.